worked hard, but we're doing it together. Yeah, do or die. They're coming out here expecting they're gonna beat us based on how we just played. <laughs> Fucking prove them wrong. Big deep breath. There is no shit talking. We beat them on the scoreboard yep. right here. We are not gonna fuel their fucking fire. I have one thing to say. It's that it is not their day. Not their day. That's right. Period. Not their day. Yeah, they want to get to the finals. We're in their way. Not today. They're in our fucking today. way. Not today. We're gonna slay that fucking dragon today. Let's, 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 let's go, Let's go. Let's go. Let's wake the fuck up and let's get this shit done. Hey, discipline is how we win. Hey, believe in each other. Do Together, your fucking job. Together, we fucking beat them. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! Team. Fuck yeah, Marshall. D-Y-N-A-S-D! What? Blue dragon, baby. Not their fucking day, boys. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! Let's go. Rich, what do you think? Do you think Rebel can step up and take down San Diego Dynasty? No. And those guns are going to produce a kill, and it's Archie Montemayor taking the walk. Yeah, five alive for Revo. It's tough for Dynasty now to try to get out on either side. Built it out. There goes Ryan with walk yeah. from the insert. Dynasty not getting off to a good start. Lake has been the only gun preventing any forward progress on the stake side now that he has to turn and get shot, and, uh -huh. and, and Dalton gets shot as well. They're shooting off the break. I yeah. traded with Dalton at the end. Getting clipped over the top of the snake insert. So now, two body advantage for Revo as Benny's looking to wrap. And Arena gonna look to shoot Benny. The pack comes through. Ooh. Oh my god, that was huge. That and a major a penalty absolutely. assessed here on Revo. That's gonna pull out Henry Sense, another body for Revo. And He's that dead. is gonna open up the door. That is an absolutely gigantic mistake here for Baltimore Revo. Wow. I heard him. Oh my god. Hey, you got the penalty. Let's get over it, all right? Okay, guys. Are we done with it? It's a test. Get over it, right? Now, going into this point, five on four. Yeah, they do have to start with four. So, Revo trying to get out wide. D-side able to make it clean into D1. I think we might be seeing a penalty yeah. here. It's on Urena who tries to fill out and pulls Dalton out of the back center. So, a gift being given back to Revo now. Blake Yarber. No one knows he's there. Up at the brick in the 50. So dangerous when Blake gets up the middle, he especially can. undetected. So Mara tries to go, chances are he'll get picked up. He can try to trade, like there's the move right there. Wow. Oh, but Omar was able to get through and get the drop on Blake and stay alive and they lose Greenspan. Archie's gonna launch in a desperation run and see if they pick him up. They, they do. do. Wow. Wait, I thought oh, that was uh -oh, it. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Red. The red. Oh. Drop, Let's go, drop. Yes. Yes. I didn't know that, that was a fucking penalty. I, I knew it. Hey, 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 chill. You. Get yourself ready. Hey, get yourself ready. Stop talking. Get, get yourself ready. Oh, oh, guys, two penalties. Start with three. Start with three. Dynasty on the screen with three bodies. Big move by Dalton all the way to the Drito three. Why not, right? The worst thing that could happen is you're going to lose a five on three. Oh, looks like Dalton is going to come off. Yosh gets shot. It is a four on one. Concede, 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 Dynasty. Calm Sense taking the walk. Yeah, so Dynasty repositioning here, gonna get Greenspan out and Archie up into the snake, goes into snake, Velez looking inside. And they also lose Velez. Omara's still alive, but it's looking pretty good for Dynasty here. It's looking at Greenspan, just knows. Two, boys. Let's go, Let's go. Big point. Hey, big point right there. Here comes a big bite. And a hammer trying to get dropped on Blake. Blake gotta be capable. Major, that's three flags that go up. A major gonna be assessed on Blake. Look at this, Dalton Vanderbilt going to town on that side, gets Amara. I can't wait to see Now he gets a minor Lord. penalty, and now a major penalty on Dalton because he does shoot a body. It's supposed to be a fair contest, Jason. Everyone's good still? Yep. Nice touchdown, baby. Did you get killed by Mexico? Did we get that point? Yeah. yeah. They got a double major? Yeah. There was only one body to pull, no, so they at least have four. Okay. Hey, let's guys, go. I thought we were going to make that. Hey, let's go. Let's go. We're moving go. forward. Yo, here's the deal, though. It's still a match. Yeah, definitely. This only puts us up by two. Uh -huh. puts us up by two. Henry. There's six minutes. Henry. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, let's go. How many are we starting with? Four. <laughs> Mm. 
Mevo trying to protect this two-point lead. Looks like they're going to be losing a body. Yeah, even up on the counter. The ball now is in Dynasty's court. And there's Archie now here in the snake. He's at the 50-yard line. Wraps his first kill. Oh, and he gets his first kill. Archie's going off right now. He's going to get a little two back. Oh, no, he gets taken out. Beautiful shot by Omar to save it. Dolph is still on that island in D1. So three and three here. Three on three. And oh, Ryan gets a cross get that shot. Crossfield shot. He didn't. No, he missed. He did. Now Ryan gets shot. God, wow. This year is getting so good. Looking like an all star out there. Look how white Amara is in the snake corner. I love it. Amara playing the blind out there. Oh, he might have got caught, though. No, nope, able to dodge the ball. Here comes Greenspan. He's going to launch in the snake. Arch is right behind him. Blake gets torched, though, trying to get up. Blind Greenspan. Not going to waste this opportunity to get up here. here oh, gets his first elimination in the center of the field. does shoot Rob Velez. He's going to shoot. I guess Henry. two. Two pack right Locked now, Blind. Oh. He runs into Amara. I don't think Amara got shot. Archie, not sure if he's aware. He is now. Oh, but then Archie gets caught cross field, so it's just Marcelo and Dalton in a two on two situation. But Marcelo has the whole snake side to him, so he's going to get the easy cross field shot on Shear and then get to eat up Benny Carroll. No, Benny dodges that ball, but he's got good reflexes. Man. Yeah, Benny releases, gets caught. Marcelo's going to release two points with two minutes and 40 seconds left. Hey, I got to chill out of the middle, boys. You let Ryan and the snake on, run the word, no one's gone. Rebel makes Dorito one on the break, but they lose their center guy going up the middle. Great job by Dynasty to rock out Velez, who's gone to that can. Very consistently, Benny Carroll going to get eliminated now. 5 one 3 advantage here for Dynasty. This is exactly what Dynasty needed. Have a big break, get a couple kills, and they know that they have to push fast. They have a gigantic advantage, and they are making the most of it. Oh, man, Marcelo just punished. Who was that? Omara. If you're Revo, you're not conceding the point. Omaro knows he's just going to wear it, and he's, it's going to be rough, and it's going to it's going to hurt a bit. But yeah. even that extra second could be the difference maker. And I mean, hats off to Omaro. He he gives it and he takes it like a champ. Hey boys, believe, 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 Dynasty, believe. Influence the future. This is big, boys. Here we go. Two minutes left in the game, guys. Dropping penalty, yeah. Minor on Omara. Looks like Revo could possibly be throwing this point away. Here is a penalty assessed, and that just takes the body's count down to three. And yeah, but look at that. Henry going to get shot by Dalton cross field under a minute right now. Revo is probably just begging. Oh, Archie takes Dynasty. one. Another, yeah, that was a great kill here on Archie, but Ryan Greenspan right there, but that's going to slow him down a little bit. They still have a couple bodies to shoot. Ryan knows what to do. He crawls down. Yeah. He can get the cross field pressure. Now he's got to launch heads up. Oh, gets that kill. He does. That's, man, Ryan Greenspan, I'll tell you what. He's really good. That's overtime. Let's go, Let's go, go. We're going to overtime. No, you good? Okay. Okay. You know, ready? Yeah, Mikey. Uh, hey, right, Pops. So uh, overtime. Hey, overtime, guys. Overtime. 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 Rich, Maddie, yes. we got. Go. Dynasty. Oh, I, th I think Dynasty's got the momentum right now. They're really experiencing this. I, it would be cool for Paintball if Revo wins, though. But it certainly could be cool for Revo. I think the advantage does go to Dynasty. Sure enough, they do shoot. Steven Amaro is a huge weapon for Revo, and then they might be clipping out Henry Sense as he tries to get out wide. Yeah, they do. So yeah, it looks like it. Dynasty's just so tough to beat in these situations. There's no one on this side of the field for Revo. That's going to be a challenge for them. So San Diego Dynasty going to be punching their ticket to come from behind victory here against Baltimore Revo. What a great run for Revo, though, making it all the way to top four again. But that just 
Seems to be where they stall, though. You know, they get to the semis, and it, it was looking really solid for them for a while, as Dynasty was making tons of mistakes, getting penalties all over the place, starting down bodies. But even with all that chaos, we talked about being able to summon the momentum of the past and use it to get the best performance out of you and your boys, and that's what happened here, Dynasty. We cannot make mistakes, even more so than ever, right? That's the problem when you're up here, okay? Is it's very difficult to keep going up. And that's where we are, we're at the precipice. And nobody, except for every single person that's watching us and every person that we've beaten, wants us to win. So we're knocking people out and then they gotta root for us. But that's the problem, we're fighting harder adversaries every single step of the way. Every single step. Guys, let's, let's control that destiny. about it last night. Yeah, right. yeah. We're stepping and moving forward, influencing the rest of today. Yeah. We do that by working hard, by resting, by studying, and fucking being ready. Right? Yep. Ready to improve, ready to hit our shots, ready to capitalize when we're given that opportunity. All right? Let's do the work the rest of this afternoon until we beat whoever's out for playing. All right? Let's go. Way to fucking believe in that one, dude. It was ugly. But we fought and we did not fucking give up. Right? right? Let's fucking go. Come yeah, on, baby. Right. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Hey, boy. D Y N A S T. What? what? Like, we're gonna fucking do this. You can feel it, right? We're so fucking close on a rebuild. I fucking love you guys. Seriously, I love you guys. We connected multiple times. They took spots on us, man. You guys went down really bodies, didn't give a shit. down bodies multiple times and fucking pulled it back. Yeah. You guys, you guys did some fucking superstar we shit. We stayed up attacking. There. Look, these are the hard matches that made us who Revo was, right? The fucking grit, playing those overtime points. We played how many overtime points this this year? It's ridiculous, right? But we grind them out, and that makes us ready. That's why no team out here wants to play us. Let's keep it up. They right. thought they thought they knew how to beat us, and we went out there and made them struggle. I mean, we had the dragon in the fucking grips, right? Next time we finish the deal. See the kill shot. We finish the deal. We get a beer. Uh, love you guys. Hey, I love, you. I love all you guys, man. Hey, boys. hey. hey. Reflect and move on, boys. Look, all right. You see what we just did? Nope. We had We're a team there, that said they figured out how to beat us, and we almost took it. Go. I don't want to feel this again, man. This like no. fucking breaks my heart every time. And that crowd has our backs. People love us. Let's yeah. fucking give them what they want next to them. Yeah. Come on, boys. Family on three, man. One, two, three. Family! Family. Welcome back here to the 2022 NXL Windy City Major, presented by Bunker Kings. I'm Matty Marshall. We got here with Rich Telford, and really excited for the most important day of the weekend right now. It's Sunday, man. It's going to be a battle out here, and it's what an interesting Monday. story of these teams that made it. Just look who's in fighting out of the wild card round. Right, we have Red Legion. With, uh, I mean, this is a legendary squad. They have their full starting lineup back, and they're going to be taking on Infamous. Uh, so one of these two teams is going home and going home early on Sunday, and then also the scrappy uh, New York Extreme squad getting out of the basement. They're not going to be ranked in the last place after this event because they made it to Sunday top 10 at least. Hallelujah. They're, they're playing Houston Heat. Now, Houston Heat struggled a little bit on the first day, losing both games, but they came back, and they were able to win both of their games uh, yesterday on Saturday to make it in. But New York Extreme has beat Houston Heat in the recent past. Still on paper, got to give it to Heat. Heat is the second-ranked team overall, playing coming into this event, the 20th-ranked team. But paintball is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately sport. We're in the pits right now with that scrappy New York Extreme squad. Much improved, man. They really look good out there going 3-1 and one in the prelims. And, Rich, you got to be proud of them. I mean, you're coaching that team, so. Yeah, super proud. And honestly, they, they've always been capable. They've just, they, they are their worst enemies, and we've just got to figure that stuff out and move forward. Like they're finally kind of playing together as a team. It's, it's, there's a great group of guys. They just just have to execute, man. They know what they need to do. They just need to do it, believe in themselves, not lose their confidence, not lose their faith, and just follow through. Obviously, they're playing a team significantly higher ranked, significantly you know more talented, a lot more experience. But New York's got a lot of fight in them, man. Uh, I feel like this is gonna, uh, has the potential at least to be a really, really good match. Yeah, and they're getting pretty deep. You know, I mean, CJ Cantor there on your screen is wearing that camo sandana pacing back and forth number 12 he's been a, a very solid guy who can play multiple positions he's a great gunfighter jerry carl number four there on your screen he's their missile probably fastest guy in the team most one of the most aggressive players in the entire league uh they got harris hussein out there you see packraft jr the bearded wonder in the back there with Corey hall new pickup this year 
I mean, it's a team that's stacked with talent, should not be in last place, and they proved it here. Now, can they take down Houston Heat? This is a big test for them. Are they ready? Tough order. Let's yeah. Go, boys. But they can't do it. I mean, look at what we else have today. I mean, we have Level taking on Dynasty, X Factor taking on Impact, AC Diesel will play the winner of Infamous and Legion, and then the Hurricanes. Man, the Hurricanes, the rookie Hurricanes, <laughs> four and zero in the prelims. I saw those guys last night actually as I was walking to dinner, and uh, I was like, "How are you guys feeling?" And they're like, "Maddie, we went four and zero. We could, we're on cloud nine right now, man. We couldn't feel better." Absolutely. Awesome. Enjoy, boys. So. Yeah, it is could potentially shaping up to be a very interesting Sunday. It really just depends on, are we going to see one of the usual suspects here taking a win? You know, is it going to be Dynasty? Dynasty, I mean, they've been on a run the past two years. And, I mean, the most legendary team in existence. And uh, so with your level, the way that level's playing, they absolutely can beat Dynasty. It's just do they believe it in their own minds? Because level has not been able, they made it to some Sundays, but and they've made it to a top three, so they can go deep. It's just, can they get past the juggernaut that is Dynasty? I feel like this is the first time in a long time where a team like Level mm. actually could win a tournament. You know, like People talk about winning tournaments. There's not a lot of teams that actually win tournaments. I'm not talking about second place or third place or yeah. fourth place. I'm talking about first place. There's probably 10 teams in the history of paintball that have won first place. And for a team like Level to be able to get up into that upper echelon is amazing, I think. Now it is a quite drizzly morning out here in Chicago. And I think we know why. Matt Marshall. <laughs> yeah, it's all my fault. Well, I appreciate uh, you finally owning and taking hey, you responsibility. Just, you something. gotta take responsibility sometimes. Yeah. You gotta just own up. Uh, so yeah, first point will be Extreme and Houston Heat rolling down here in the wild card round. It is, and then also today, man, it's gonna be an awesome day. We got the, the all-star game going down at 115. Uh, Team Brethauer versus Team Martinez. $5,000 at stake for the MVP of the All-Star Game. Man. We got $1,000 at stake for the uh, McKinley, Mosley, and Associates, a law firm. Uh, they're putting up 1000 bucks for the move of today. Also, 500 bucks to the MVP, courtesy of Bunker Kings, and then a Golden Barrel. That's the MVP total. So here we go. Jumping into point number one from the red side here, New York Extreme. Rich, looks like a five-on-five -five break with the referee checking out one of the players from New York Extreme there on the D side. Looks like he's clean. Well, that's the referee who likes to throw the penalties too, so you see that guy go in, you get a little scary. Uh, Houston Heat gets out to the baby Dorito Matt Dorito side, out to the baby. Five on five breakout here. Josh Taylor in the can Dorito side for New York Extreme. Sam Monville and Tyler Harmon in the center towers. Extreme first to go up the center here, Rich, getting quickly out of those back spots and moving up, get to the wedges. You can see doubling up those wedges. It's a great offensive position. Houston Heat content to just chill in their spots and try to work some gunfights. Yeah, and if you recall yesterday, Houston Heat was content with just sitting here and playing a really, really long point and eventually winning that point. It did work out for them, yeah, though. And, 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 and look, I oh, the first to win a gunfight is going to be Houston Heat. They win two, actually. So Hennessy and Taylor, Ocaro and Taylor walking off early. It's got it. This is, this is the, that's the point of the game, though, that can't they can't it. be losing bodies in Cannot. this situation. Yep. Five on three situation right now in favor of Houston Heat. First point so important. We knew it was going to be a long, slower point. Houston Heat was losing some bodies trying to take ground yesterday, so they, I think, intelligently went to a little bit more conservative game plan to try to keep bodies alive and then work them out, and it, and it worked out for them. Well, Paid yeah. dividends as they beat Uprising and Thunder. 100%. And in, in a situation like this, if they can get up a point or two and then just make these five spots and force you to cross the gaps and attack them, they're constantly going to be putting themselves in a, in a better position and an advantage in this match. Yeah, it's Winning or losing that first point is so important, Matt. Absolutely. They have Smith and Fedorov out there on the D side and D1 and D2. Great communication here from Houston Heat, man. They're just looking real solid right now, looking in control, not feeling a ton of pressure. Yeah, no thinking, pressure. Where's the next move? Where, you know, just that's what they're trying to figure out. And then yep. Fedorov's going to go to D3. And it does look like, look, point number one, Bo with this three on five, just just letting it ride, why not? No, no reason to concede this point necessarily. Uh, as long, uh, until maybe one more death. Yeah. Like maybe one more death. And and the, the one positive thing for New York here is that they have the position they need to contain Houston Heat in the pocket, which is gonna force Houston Heat to try to come up the middle contend with them. If they can get a kill or two, oh. Yeah, CJ, CJ taking the walk. Off. That yeah. should do it. Yeah, that allows Smith to get up to the brick in the center, and then, yeah, there's, Gonna let McLean get shot. Tal, actually no, gonna save McLean. Really good point there for Houston Heat. Flawless victory, five spots, one one from those five spots. Fedoroff really the only guy kind of repositioning over there on the D side. 
And New York made all their spots. They just got shot out of their spots. And that's, I think, what Houston Heat is going to do here to these teams. If they can get, get to those spots, they can control the field, communicate, and just try to outplay and outthink their opponents. Yeah, and that's now it's up to Extreme uh, to say, hey, look, don't fall apart. Don't yeah. mentally fall apart. You're only down by one right now. Which you, we do sometimes. And you could see how pumped up, though, Houston Heat was. Yeah, 100%. So they're feeling it. Yeah. They were also very hyped and ready to play this uh, this match here in the wild card round. Now, Houston Heat has won a tournament out of the wild card round before, and it was at World Cup. Yeah. So Houston Heat's an amazing team. I have to say, though, I think they were a little afraid to play extreme this morning. I jumped in their tent to get out of the rain this morning. They almost attacked me. Oh, you were spying. Yeah, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm just trying to get out of the rain. Sorry. Oh, he, Infamous taking the early flag over there on the D side. One not get shot, taking the walk. Rich, not a good start here yeah. for LA Infamous. Is five on three, Red Legion. Yeah, five on three situation here. Thomas Taylor up in the uh, brick in the, on the drill side for Infamous. Infamous does get into the snake one though, Matty. Well, Legion with the body up at that 50 brick and he goes past the 50 at Smotroff. He's hunting, he's trying to get creative. Here comes Jonah Jamrose though. Jonah's gonna get into the 50. Does he know that Smotroff is there? I don't think he does. Smotroff's gonna launch and trade out with Thomas Taylor who's having a great tournament. The veteran. Jonah looks inside to see jerseys everywhere. Like, who should I shoot? Who should I shoot? Well, unfortunately Infamous is losing Cali Rudolph out of that back as well, uh, Jonah and then gets Jonah's going to get caught. So, look, uh, I like the couple moves that happened over here for uh, Infamous. They lost bodies early, and they didn't really shoot anyone from from Legion. Legion just, they finally lost a body, but that's what you want to see. Three on five, might as well try to make something happen. Either win that quick gunfight, try to get into, you know, change things up, get into a forward attacking position. And like we've been saying all weekend, penalties hurt. Yeah. yeah losing one guy, not that big a deal. Losing the whole side of the field, kind of a big deal. Yeah, and for a second, I thought was, who got that penalty? It looked like it was Harrison Fry. It, I, it looked like Harrison to me too, and right? I was like, it couldn't be Harrison. Yeah, because he's hurt. No, no, he's bru he's got a bruise on his knee. Well, <laughs> it's just, you know, he didn't play the prelims, and then I looked up and had, and I thought I saw somebody that looked like Harrison Fry. I'm looking in the pits right now, and I don't see him over there. It could have been us teasing him about coaching yesterday. And he's like, you know what? I'm not taking this coaching blind down. I am a player. I can't let I am a player out like that. That's <laughs> it. Give me my gear. I'm going in, boys. Well, we're, okay, we're in the pits right here on your. Oh, we were on your screen. I was, should just use the technology here, but <laughs> but no. So Houston Heat up by one on New York Extreme. These teams switch sides. When a point is scored, if it's a no point, they will stay on the same side. So Extreme in the black and gray are going to be on the blue side. And Houston Heat in their traditional red jerseys will be on the red side. It's like they're going with the same starting five here. Yeah, I watched a little of the film last night on Houston Heat. They do the uh, like to do the exact same play, and they execute it very well. So why shouldn't they? Yeah, they're going with Smith and Fedorov on the uh, on that D side for the most part. Tyler's played every single point this weekend. Uh, Monville has has uh, become a starter here. I mean, he's sometimes a starter. Or something you know, that's such a deep yeah. roster, right? But yeah. so it's like you got to ride the hot hand if you're top, Coach Tom Martinez. Yeah, Sam's one of those guys that you want on. The, uh, here comes the penalty from Pat Kraft. Once again, that's New York pulled. Extreme uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. Pulls out CJ. Jerry's in a good spot over here yeah. in yeah, the we, snake. We had 50 snake and Dorito four, and uh, Pat Kraft drawing the penalty there. Oh, Houston Heat dropping their first player though. Tyler Harmon walk. Oh, Tech 2. Wow, Thomas look at doing this. Work. I think it, is it McLean? It wouldn't surprise me. Sac stayed strong. Three on three now all of a sudden, and New York Extreme has the spots. We just talked about this. Might as well take a risk if you're in a three on five situation because you could turn the table here. Now Carl does get shot and clipped out of his spot. See if they picked up Harris Hussein. Oh they did. God. They picked up Harris as well too, and they get a shot on McLean. So it was looking interesting here for a second. Yeah. But it certainly was. Uh, but Houston Heat hanging tough. Three on three with all the spots, and New York struggles to work together. And great play job like, by Smith. Play like individuals, get dinked out one at a time, and at that point. And Rich Monville's so good at this. Sam Monville is so good in low body situations. He's an amazing gunfighter. He doesn't get rattled. No. He doesn't get all squirrely in his bunker when bodies are dying around him and the variables are changing. And so it's just an excellent heads up situation it's, execution here from uh, Ryan Smith and it, Sam Monville. And I can't. I think it, I think Federer's still alive, but I'm not sure. I don't see him over there. I yeah. think it's just the two of them. Yeah, I think it was a three on two there. Um, one thing about uh, nice about a player like Sam Monville is, you know, in the chaos, you can always call out to that guy and be like, hey, what's going on? He'll give you the count, tell your body, say, what do we need to do? And, he, and he's got that little, it's like a little computer for you. Like, hey, let me hit Google up real quick. All right, Google, what should I do here? Okay, cool, yeah. thanks, Sam. No, Fedorov was alive, so that was a three on three. 
Went from a five on three to a three on three, and then to a three on none. New York's got to do a better job of working together there as a team instead of playing individual paintball. Red Legion coming out up against Infamous. Red Legion looking almost flawless that first point. They lost Smoach off up the middle, but that was it. Infamous struggling with that penalty. I think without that penalty would have been a, a longer, closer point. Now let me ask you this. If Harrison was out there, does he sit himself as a, a coach player for getting the penalty? Uh, no. If Harrison's good to go, I want him on the field because he, I mean, he's made the all-star team as voted by the coaches. So... I mean, if, if, if he tells me he's good enough to play, I'm going to at least give him a shot out there, right? Every time. Even if I was my own coach, you know? Yeah, so yeah. Coach Harrison, coaching Harrison. Infamous losing their first attacker in the snake insert bunker. They do make a bigger bite on the Dorito side, though. He gets out there live. So four on five advantage for Red Legion. Yeah, great off the break shots. Oh, but then they're going to drop Sergey and then make a couple secondary moves here for Legion on your screen on the blue side. Smotrov going up the middle. Ooh, he's going to yeah. running referee coming from the sideline. Never a good... Never a good sign. Ooh. John picked up the wrong, he dropped two pods. He picked up the wrong pod. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, so Smoshoff might have had some spray on his paint, so he pulled the pod out of his pack, put it on the ground, and then pulled a second one. The referee went and checked it, but checked the wrong pod. Sneaky Red Legion. Smoshoff now moving up the center. They do lose attacker on the drill side, Matty. Look yeah, and now Cody Mikowski flying on over to the snake side. He ends up getting taken out. Here comes Thomas Taylor, runs through and shoots Smotrov, though, as we're going to see a major penalty oh. assessed on the running towards Infamous' side. And that's the last player over there. I believe it's Zach Patient. No, maybe not. I, well, if it is Patient, he changed his head wrap Yeah, up. It's, not, it's not Zach. I can't see who it is. Patient's number 88, and he, had, he was... I think he, he had a great beard. He's got great the walk yesterday. of patience. I was going to say, he looks like Zach, but. That is Zach. He just changed his head wrap up. Crafty. Thanks, Zach. Thanks for helping out us there. out out here, man. I think. Or maybe was that maybe Matt Rao getting a spin? I mean, we didn't really see Matt, so Matt Rao, rookie, coming up and getting on Infamous' line. I'm pretty sure that is Zach. Yeah, that's Zach. So was it Zach that got the penalty, though? New York coming back out with. Josh Taylor, Harris Hussein, Will Hennessy, CJ Cantor. Jerry Carr. Red Legion going with the same line, it looks like. Yeah, so right now here, New York Extreme on your screen. Their starting lineup, Josh Taylor getting the start. Down by two. And then now Houston Heat. Yeah, same lineup out there for Houston Heat. Probably just going to be a steady dose for Todd Martinez of these five players until someone gets tired. These five and players going to these five spots. New York Extreme losing their first attacker on the snake side. They do get fed off to the 3 one Houston Heat. So four on five advantage here for Heat. And Heat is outside the pocket with Fedorov. He likes his breakout, Matty. And why shouldn't they? If they can get here live with four guns up on the break and control the whole field, this gives them a really good chance. They can play offensively or defensively from these positions. Tyler Harmon with a great feel for the back center. Oh, he gets caught going in there. Four on four. A little bit of a spark of light here for New York Extreme. Yeah, and Fedorov's outside wide on that D side. Where's Extreme on the D side? Do you see? I do not. Is Sam Bongo releases. But the way Sam's look, oh, he's in Drita format. Okay, yeah, it pops out from D4. So better field position here for Extreme on that D side as we're past 10, the 10 minute mark, nine minutes and 39 seconds to go here in the wild card round. It's a big moment for New York Extreme. They do not want to go down by three for our second ranked overall team, Houston Heat. Oh, and he tries to get past that 50. I'm pretty sure Sam got a shot in on him and he did. Great shot on Jerry Caro. Oh, and Harris Hussein taking the early walk. Ouch. Got shot out of that tower on the D side there. Yeah, it just looks like Extreme's grinding their gears a little bit, Rich. Yeah, it was a four on four. Goes from four on four with good field position to a two on four. They're losing gunfights. They're getting shot on moves. When it's it's been close a couple times, right? You know, so yeah. it went to four on four. The other one went down to three on three. So I like that. They're just losing those those small moments that Houston Heat is prevailing in. I mean, they still have some time to work with, but really need to tighten it up. But it's close, though. The Houston Heat on the flip side, just so calm and composed. And even though Tyler's died early a couple times, it hasn't mattered because they've been able to 
to dig in and make make some shots. Yeah, just make really good decisions, work, have really good teamwork, control the field for those positions. They, there's no reason for them to go forward, right? They can just sit there, talk it up, zone up the field, control. They lose a body or two, they know where they make, what adjustments they need to make. CJ Cantor now in the straight, in the snake for New York Extreme. Again, it's only a two on four here, but CJ Cantor is a crafty player. Might be able to figure out how to get down the snake. If he, if he can get a kill on the snake corner, he could go down, eliminate Sam. Josh Taylor holding it down over there from New York. Federoff moving up to the Doritos. See if CJ can be a hero right now. As he's over here on an island on the snake side in snake two here for New York Extreme. Houston Heat with a two point lead, just trying to protect. Just being very careful, shooting lanes. Does look like they want to make a move on the D side. There goes Fedorov. And Josh Taylor gets him. And Smith right behind him, though. Like how close Ryan Smith stays to Fedorov and goes right through that same lane. Not New York Extreme not able to pick up that kill. So it was a nice shot on Fedorov, nonetheless. Houston Heat now pressing the issue. Josh Taylor getting the check. Monville thought about making that move in the center, but hit the brakes and then a little little retreat back. Here comes Chad George. He's going to get in the mix on the offense. Going to try to run down CJ. Jumps and runs the highway. Bunkers out CJ. No call on the penalty. And Smith still alive over there and forcing the concession. Monville looked like he was in there and alive as well, too. So great job by Smith, George, and, uh, and Monville to put yet another point on the board here for Houston Heat. Extreme has to win this next point. If they, they don't win the next point, and it, we have another two minute, three minute long point, they're gonna go down by four, and that'll probably be it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's be honest, it's a journey, right? Yes. In New York, we're on a journey. We're trying to become the best team in the world, and we've got to learn a lot of lessons, and hopefully we learn our lesson. We, uh, we came out a little bit flat that first point, brought it back to a three on three, didn't close out well. Gave up the second point, gave up the third point. Hey, Will, CJ, Pat Kraft, Jerry, John. Yeah, it's... They're surviving the breakout. Yeah, the mistakes aren't gigantic, nope. but they're enough that Heat's going to make you pay because Heat sure. just isn't really making mistakes. I was yeah, say, again, you just can't make any, just right? Tyler died early twice. That's it. Other than that, a couple deaths here and there, but they've been doing what they need to do to put those three points on the board. Now, Legion, similar situation for Infamous here, but Infamous going to strike early. And they're gonna get a shot on uh, Karzlev. Yeah, they got both, they doubled up the Drito can mat, and they got both players from Red Legion eliminated from the, the can as Infamous attacks into the 50 snake with Jonah. Malloy fills out to the snake corner, three on five advantage here for Infamous, down by a few points. I'd like to certainly get back in this match. Oh, Jonah gets a great kill inside. So, yeah, I was gonna say, somebody needs to clock in for Infamous right now. Oh, Jonah uses the reflexes to get out of the way. That was a close one. That was youth, that was youth. <laughs> yeah, he's an athlete. And he's playing really well for Infamous. I mean, yeah. they have multiple options to play in the snake, but Jonah Jamrose is the one getting the start over here on Sunday. Infamous would love to have a good showing here. So one of the things some of the paint manufacturers are doing now, Matt, is making brighter paint so that we can see it. So if you guys can at home can see the paint any better, obviously it's gonna be a little tougher on the rainy day, but let us know if you like the brighter paint. Is that Sean Salcedo moving up to the uh, brick on the inside. Yeah. Only gets caught. Elbow Moy comes. Jonah's going to try to clear that out. Doesn't have to do it, though, as he traded with Salcedo. Thomas Taylor coming across to watch over Jonah. Sergey in the tower, wheeling and dealing. Hmm. Oh, my God. I was going to say, how did Sergey <laughs> live through that? He caught Thomas. But he didn't. Infamous going to win their first point here. Make it a two-to-one match with plenty of time still, left. Still a couple bodies out there left alive for infamous as Ryan Hall and Kelly Rudolph alive with Jonah. So good point to get it back here, take it to a one point match. Yeah, man, infamous would love to, to go deep. I mean, they took second overall last year, but it's been a little bit frustrating for them this season as they're currently ranked eighth overall, which is not bad with the ninth, uh, a fifth, and then a 12th, and they didn't make it to the event in Texas, the other minor event. And it has been since 2016 that they won an event. But that's just how difficult it is to win events. It's not easy out here, man. It's not easy. This is the moment right now. Those players here on your screen need to step up and win a point against Houston Heat to make this one a game and keep it close. If Houston Heat puts up another point and can burn a couple minutes off, I mean, is it possible? We did see a 4-0 comeback yesterday with the Hurricanes against Legion, but 
it just makes it really, really difficult when you're playing a team that's just looking as dialed as Houston Heat is Sunday morning. Ronnie and Chad in for Houston Heat. He's up by three, so they bring in their second line. Release there from the back line is De Debra Stewart going to the tower on the drill side. Houston Heat in their primary spots. This is where they want to play from, five on five. And, you know, it makes sense playing this style of paintball. If you think you're the best team in the world and you can get to five spots and force the other team to come get you, you're going to put yourself in an advantage situation and have a real good chance of going forward. The other team's got to figure out how to get through that cross, Matt. Yeah, it's... CJ's in a good spot right now, and they need to get out wide, though, and get up the field. Houston Heat is just pumping paint through those zones, though. They still have six minutes and 28 seconds to work with, but... You know, that's what I was kind of saying. If they, This is the moment right here. Ben Knock, yeah. Extreme. Pat Kraft getting out of home, getting to the can on the G side. I like that. Yeah, the problem with Heat is just, man, they're so disciplined. They communicate so well that it's going to be super hard to break that zone, but that's what New York has to do. New York can't play deep ball here and just sit back and zone up the field because Houston Heat's not going forward. They're already up by points. It's 3-0 here. Must-win situation for both of these teams. Loser goes home. Winner goes on. Taylor moves up to the 50. So Cantor and Taylor up the center. New York Extreme was able to get out wide with Carl into D1. They have Hennessy over here on the snake side posted up. Still at the can though. So look for Hennessy to try to make his move. Get into the snake at some point here soon. Five minutes and 36 seconds left. Hennessy is taking a ton of paint though through that gap that he needs to run through. Yeah, it's... It's one of those things that you can't just go, right? You've got to wait until they get off the gap. Either he reloads or he gets shot like he just did. Stewart gets shot, giving Will Hennessy the opportunity to get outside. Listen. Yeah, Hennessy's got to feel it right now. He oh, is I think Ronnie Dizon just got shot. Two referees going to run in. He's got to be careful because that's the penalty ref. He oh, did. Ronnie got yeah. lucky. That should have been a penalty there. So Ronnie taking the walk. Houston Heat losing two bodies here pretty quick. This is the opportunity right now for New York Extreme. Houston Heat. Needs to just try to tighten it up and hope that McStream makes mistakes, maybe gets a penalty. Hennessy finally gets through that gap. Nice job by Will to be patient there, but he does need to get need to get things going. Two more bodies drop as Chad Boucher takes the walk, Tyler takes the walk, and then Ryan Moorhead also last body left alive. That is going to do it. Great point there for New York Extreme. Yeah, somebody sprinting and hit the buzzer. <laughs> Carl doing the dance for CJ and the spin and then going to hit the buzzer, make sure he's clean. New York gets on the board. I wouldn't say we have a game yet, Matty, but we got a we got a chance. With 4:35 left, they need one more point. In yeah, we it's get at least it's a little more entertaining. Yep. And that was a big moment right there for Extreme. Houston Heat though still burnt a decent Ooh. amount of time off that clock. Yeah, 100%. And if Houston Heat comes out and is able to put another point on the board and burn another two minutes off, it's going to look very good that they can move on to play the Hurricanes. Let's listen in here real quick. Utah, that uh, secondary to Albany. We gotta pick up, we gotta pick up that Albany. But that means they're gonna go three in the center and those two outsides are gonna just sit there. Exploit that. Coach Dan, here at Extreme. Yeah. Dan a super valuable asset to the team. Super smart, super analytical. Big help for me, for sure. Infamous goal with that two and two. Oh, a little bit of a stumble there, and into the snake, Woo. Jonas. Gutsy play call yeah. here, Jonah with the inside and out route, and he makes it clean, and they do shoot a body. However, Smotrov, the speed demon, he also gets into the snake as well, too. Jonah beats Smotrov to the 50, though. Jonah needs to be very, he's been, I really like the patience we've seen out of Jamrose. And here's the battle on snake side. Yeah, he's been playing Smotrov it well. and Jamrose. Smotrov the first to switch inside. Look for some shots across the field. Jones kind of protecting himself on the tape. Oh, he's looking for, I think he got bounced in the back of the head. Oh, it bounced and hit him in the head. Wow. Unlucky there. Another Red Legion player, though, Sergey taking the walk. So three on four advantage yeah. here for Infamous. See, they're trading bodies rich, but Smotrov's at the 50. Yep. So see if Smotrov with the lead can be patient here. Smotrov's one of the best athletes we have in the sport, and his top level on the aggression is as good or better than anyone's. The knock on him, though, is that as he's, he just gets a little, a little he overbattles a little bit. a little loose. Much. Yeah, and so in this moment right now for Smotrov, it's 10 minutes left, you're up by one, you have the 50, you're by yourself in here, you got a body behind you, there's really no reason for him to recklessly engage. 100%. Work with 
the other two guys control the field. There's a, Infamous has only got one more body than they do. So yeah. they can get one more body. Then they can kind of switch to offense. Good fill Ooh, corner nice, there for yeah. Infamous. Oh, perfect timing there for Thomas. Yeah, nice fill out there for Thomas. Malloy was head checking inside and almost got his gun up. Smotrov, got to be careful, man. Smotrov keeps popping the top, just popped the top right there, and now Thomas is going to get in the snake. Great fill from Thomas there, huge. Thomas has had a real good event. They have no IDs in there. Oh, he shot his gun. Got to be careful not to get a penalty. No penalty, clean run through. Beautiful move by Thomas. Yeah, he knew the math. They were up one body. He can go there freely. Well, did Malloy get out clean? Sorry, Rich. I can't. Yeah, yes. he, oh yeah, he's good to go. Sorry, he's blocked out for me too. He went out to the back corner just to look at the angle and then went right back into the Aztec. So there's still three bodies left alive for Infamous. Oh, and they get a shot on Karzlev. So Karzlev was pushing up in the center. Now it's a one on three and we've seen a lot. As I say, we've seen a lot of one on threes before. Malloy almost pulled one off earlier. We'll Catches a couple extra here from Callie. Callie's like, I'm sorry, Malloy, my bad. So we got ourselves a tie match right now, Rich. That one was a very interesting point, the way that one went back and forth. Yeah, great back and forth match here. First it was all Red Legion, now it's been all infamous. Red Legion, they're just dropping guys out of the back line. They're kind of playing that same heat style of paintball, except for they're not staying alive in those, in those spots. Yeah, it's been interesting for them this year. They had a hard time during COVID to get their starting lineup. And then this year they've made two events, two eighth place finishes. So they're making it into that, you know, they're making Sundays, but then we, I think it's because they've had a hard time getting their guys together. They finally get them back together and they haven't been able to make an event. So when they get here, and I don't know how much practice they've been able to have, but it might be, okay, we have our moment. We got to make the most of it. Let's do this and just yeah, get a, just lose the composure slightly in the middle of points and try to do too much. And I feel like that's costing Legion. That, and also to be fair, I mean, if they haven't played a tournament together in a year, I mean, there's going to be some, it's not like it's, you know, a little like bit of that ring rust. back up and you guys are a thousand percent, right? Like you guys got to work back in together. It's like, you know, kind of like dating an old girlfriend, you know? Totally. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's a little bit of that ring rust. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Here we go, Houston Heat, New York Extreme. New York Extreme showing that they have some character coming back down by three. Got a solid point here. Looks like both teams survived the breakout. Five on five for both teams. Houston Heat going with that bread and butter breakout. Tyler Heat. Harmon releasing to the tower, gets in there cleanly this time. Rich Heat just needs one more. Four, 20 left to go. If he can get one more point and burn off a couple minutes, that should do it because then New York Extreme is often going to go into a really low percentage reckless attack, which they're actually pretty good at. Now, unfortunately for Extreme, they do lose CJ Cantor as he's trying to press the issue, but since they need two points in four minutes, I'm not going to knock CJ nope. for trying to push up the field and make something happen here. Yeah, the only problem with that is CJ is probably our best <coughs> communicator slash quarterback on the team, so now someone like Josh Taylor is going to have to pick up. A great move for Josh to go from the Dorito can over to the Snake Tower and cross up again. Four on five advantage here for Houston Heat. Josh Taylor picking up the ball with CJ Cantor taking an early walk. Houston Heat, good to see their composure today. Really struggled day one, lost two games, did enough, winning both their games on Saturday to make it through. And sometimes those are the teams that are, get really scary. Yeah, and it just shows you how hard it is out here when the top teams struggle. Like you expect the middle teams and the bottom teams to struggle, but when the top teams are struggling, it's a really good indication of just how challenging this sport really is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, New York Extreme, even though they're in a five on uh, four on five situation, they got to start putting guys in and making moves here pretty soon. Three minutes left to go. They need to. It's a minute and 30 for each point. The sense of immediacy in the next 20 or seconds or so really needs to get in there and they need to start uh, trying to make something Jack happen. Caro. And they lose him not going forward. They lose him trying to, trying to battle over the Dreeds. Yeah, New York's got to penetrate up the center of the field to take a little bit more pressure off the tapes. When they, if New York can get up the field, force Heat to draw those guns inside, it gets a little easier to get outside. Good fill, fill there from Pat Kraft. Going from up the center all the way back to the Drita Cannon. Now Drita one, three on four, five advantage for Houston Heat as Tyler Harmon moves into the wing Drita side. This is the inside, cutting off that snake gap. Oh, Houston Heat dropping their first body. What? Whoa, so Hennessy had all Hennessy had gotten all the way. So four there was still what, yeah. was it three left or two or four left for it for a heat though? I don't know, but I don't think they knew Will was in the snake. So Will had just uh, that kill had allowed Will to get all the way into snake two, and as he dives into snake two, they can see the point. They had one other body left alive. It was a two-on-two -two situation. 
and I think there was for sh for sure three, but maybe four players left alive for Heat. So I, I it's just tough, man. That you, they want to reset it five. It does spot them that next that that next point, that third point. So now they have to score three in what two and a half minutes, two minutes. That's just it's look. It's tough to be in that situation. Either way, this is, this is not great. So yeah, he did have four lives, four on two. Yeah, I mean, maybe Will pulls off some hero something heroic there, but that's still a pretty big ask. Yeah. I get it. Red Legion, five alive. Infamous, five alive. Infamous doubling up the snake can. And there's Sergey releasing from the back center to the snake tower looking inside to get away. I thought doubling up that can was going to cost Infamous for a second, but they were able to get Jonah out, and I think Callie might have got bounced in there. But they're both alive, and now the move out the center for Infamous. Thomas Taylor in that center wing, putting a lot of cross pressure on Sergey and uh, Britnikov. Back patient over there in the brick on the Drio side, talking to Thomas, communicating well. Sean Salcedo in the tower in the snake side, looking D side. Callie Rudolph in the snake can. Jonas in the snake insert. Infamous certainly has better field position here. Also up by body. Red Legion with three players dedicated to the middle, Maddie. Malloy now getting out to snake insert. Ooh, I think he got shot in the foot. He on the did. Wow. So nice shot there from, uh, I think that might have been, uh, tough to tell. They had three guns that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of the four guns that way could have gotten him. So, so right, Red Legion now, four players left alive. One in the center, one in the brick on the D side, and two in the towers. Oh, but Smotrov gets shot trying to get creative in that center. Salcedo is going to get up into one of those wedges. Infamous has been at the other wedge for a bit with Thomas Taylor. Jonah looking like he wants to make a move into the snake, and there are the last three players here on your screen for Red Legion. Like this look for Infamous. Three players here on the 45-yard line. Good position where they can go forward over there on the snake side. Get into that big brick snake side, wrap around, put some pressure on the two Red Legion players in the center of the field. They're trying to shoot the Red Legion players in the foot. They're pushing, as the Red Legion guys push their bunkers forward, their feet become a little exposed. So players will try to get pain in there on those feet. Looking good here for Infamous as they have a high body situation. Trying to take a lead. Legion gonna let it play out here, not conceding the point. Still 6.20 left to go. Yep. Infamous and Snake here. Could be the uh, position they need to win this point. <clears throat> Little tactical retreat there for Callie Rudolph. As he gets out back to the can to protect Jonah. Has Infamous lost the body, Matty? Is it five on three or four on three? I think it's five. I haven't seen anyone I've, die yeah, yet. Yeah, it's five. Wow. Infamous is oh, yeah, yeah. They well have, yeah. Then, then they shoot the last two real quickly here. Um, should just be one body left alive for Legion. It's Karzlev, and he's at D4, and that is going to do it. That's a perfect point for Infamous. No yeah, one got shot. good, man. Infamous is really starting to feel it big, right big now. Big difference from those first few matches on Friday. However, yeah, for sure. But however, uh, yeah, Infamous had such an interesting day one. They got blown out by level. They didn't score a point. And then they roll up and completely smoke the Latin Saints. So they go one and one with an even point spread on day one. And then did enough yesterday to make it in, but having to play in a wild card round. But they look pretty dialed in these past couple points after letting Legion go up. And it was two unanswered for Legion. And then now three unanswered for Infamous. We'll see if Legion can step up, but Infamous definitely win at their backs currently here. Looking in the pits, Infamous, there's Travis Lemansky in the shorts. No, there's Harrison with the clipboard. Okay. I wonder if I got that penalty. Coach Harrison? Yes. Maybe it was Zach. Might have been. He's got that kind of athletic build too. Just shorter and thicker. Yes. Well, New York Extreme has dug themselves a hole. Houston Heat, though, looking pretty dialed. Yeah. Rising to the challenge and here. The, the benefit of doing the same game plan every single time is you get really dialed in on, ooh, well, though, although just Houston as, Heat loses two on the break. Just as I was thinking, you know what Heat's really doing is survivability is, is outstanding. They lose two very quickly off the break. They do shoot a couple. It's getting chaotic Four, two, out yeah. here. The referee is chasing CJ Cantor, and it looks like he's going to be pulling a penalty. I don't see him. He did not throw a flag. Two Houston Heat players left alive, but lots of New York guys taking the walk. That was a, wow, that was a crazy point. I don't know where all those deaths came from. Are they using hand grenades again out there? I, I think it was a missile strike. Okay. Uh, I believe was called in from the satellite. All right. Well, they got him. Yeah, it was accurate. Yeah, very accurate. 
And that technology's improved. Uh, yeah, so just two uh, bodies in that chaos left alive. I'm wondering if Extreme was just going to fold over at this point and say, okay, that's it. Uh, but no, they are going to concede the point, so play a little bit more paintball out here, but it is definitely looking more and more like Houston Heat going to be moving on to play the Hurricanes. Chad, is Chad George? Oh, okay. Chad George is okay. There he is. No, he's playing for the Russians now. <laughs> I know. I thought for a second that he was uh, John at New York Extreme, uh -oh. saying, "Oh, hey, you guys like to talk a lot." But I yeah, think yeah. he was just looking over at Fedorov, saying, "Hey, maybe good talking to him." Great job. Well, you know, when people play extreme, sometimes it does get a bit chirpy out there. But you can't chirp anymore. There's the no chirping rule. Jason's got the no chirping rule, so any teams that are out there having fun. I really hope that's not a rule. It's 100% a rule. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, made for New Extreme in Sacramento. And then you get a minor if you uh, taunt the other team. Five on four advantage here early on for Red Legion. Red Legion doubling up that snake can again, Maddie. Hey! Infamous dropping their first attacker. Four on four now as Red Legion loses their first attack on Dorito side. Five minutes and 13 seconds left. This is as close as it's This gonna, is a good one, buddy. Yeah, this this is, is a, a finals one. match right here. Four on and again, four. no extra charge for this. This is included in your package, guys. Yeah, the, the teams have been really wary about this very treacherous but powerful snake side. It's very difficult, but they've also been risking it and getting some reward. But at this point, uh, no one towards that snake side. Uh, Infamous dropping another body. Four on three advantage here for Red Legion, Matt. Red Legion with Britnikov up at the brick. Another attacker on the D4. Sorry, Britnikov's in the can. Smotrov's in the snake. Brick, test, oh, test. Red Legion drops another player. So three, oh, here goes Thomas Taylor. Thomas Taylor with a big move here. Thomas gets dropping one, the hammer, does two. get one. Oh, he's gonna get the shot on Smotrov if he's not hit. Oh, what a beautiful job by Thomas Taylor. It's the best alive. move we've seen out here so far. Today, going to be in the running for that $1,000. Uh, Did he too. get the little three-pack here? Thomas Taylor was in the running in the prelims with the four-pack. with the four pack. Team a two-point lead. Wow. On Sunday, in a really bad spot because he had Cody left alive, but that de that snake side was completely blown open. It was not looking good for Infamous. But Thomas Taylor gets in there, stays alive the whole time, gets a three-pack. Finally, to he put can afford to buy me dinner. <laughs> that I is absolutely in the running. Again, we got a new sponsor. It's a law firm specializing in uh, pro property claims for businesses and people against insurance companies. So if you need them, they're good people to have in your corner. They've been very successful. It's McKinley, Mosley, and Associates. Uh, there is the contact information. They put up $1,000 for the best move of Sunday. So Colt cool. Roberts Thank you won the $500 uh, with his uh, amazing four-pack against uh, Impact to really turn the tables in that match and help him defeat uh, Impact in the prelims. And Colt Roberts made some amazing shots in that four-pack. Just wheeling really and did. dealing, man. I watched that like four or five times last night. And that was like his third good move at the tournament, too, I got a so. decent amount of messages saying, 100% right, right I, ball, 100% yeah, right move. I did, too, yeah. And I'd also get a bunch of messages from guys pleading their own case. <laughs> no, Matt, it was me. It was absolutely me. Let me explain to you, Matt, why I should be winning this. Oh, I like that. Pat Kraft going all the way to the brick on the D side. Let's see if he can get away with something. I think it's the way of getting shot in the goggles. Jerry Carl gets caught. New York just kind of playing a little crazy here. Will Hennessy, great fill to the snake. They got to play crazy if they want to create four points yeah. in a minute and 25 seconds left. And Force probably need four on two. They would also hope to that or sorry, that heat just starts getting major after major after major. Probably not going to happen. Nope. Like to see New York, though, going out on their swords. Not just conceding the loss. Attacking in two players to the 50s, two on four here. Houston Heat is just dug in. Looks like Will Hennessy now maybe getting eliminated from New York. Yeah, they're, uh, well, I mean, they might be putting one up on the board for pride, but they still have to get through four guns. Probably yeah. not going to happen. It's Corey Hall. He's got this. Corey is in a really good spot, but uh, you see the four bodies on your screen right there. He's in a really good spot, but he's feeling a little lonely. Does he have? One more heat player left alive? Yeah, there he, should be one more body somewhere, right? He's in the Drito, I believe, Matt. He's releasing now on the Drito side. Oh, oh Ronnie. Corey Hall wow. getting Ronnie punished by Ronnie. On, He's on. Corey. Oh. Apparently, he's, he guy's not a big fan of Corey Hall. No. Look of frustration there for Corey Hall. Did yeah. catch a couple extra, but if you're going to be the only body in the center attacking in a situation like that, you're probably going to be catching a, a decent amount. So let's get a look here at this replay. 
See Houston Heat confident in the pits, looking outstanding here. It's wild card round, gonna be moving on. Try to recreate some magic we saw at World Cup a few years ago. Let's get a look at Thomas Taylor on the board. So you see Thomas, who's had an outstanding event. And there was a, he had multiple bodies in the center he needed to work with. So he comes through, he stitches up one, runs at the perfect time, no one looking that way. Gets the shot on Kirill. Then punishes Smotrov. Smotrov could not hide in that spot. There's still one body left alive, it's Malloy. And then Malloy has no idea what's happening because Thomas made that move so quick at those quills, just carving up those three bodies to get the three pack. And a beautiful moment here for the veteran Thomas Taylor. Been doing it for 20 years. My, I mean, we have a lot of paintball to play, but that is by far the best move that we have seen so far here in this wild card round. I'm voting for Thomas just based on the fact that he could probably take me to dinner. That's, <laughs> and obviously he's the, the early leader because he's the only one, but also, because I was thinking like 500 bucks, he could take me to a nice one. It's $1,000 a day. He could take me to an amazing dinner. I can't even imagine eating $1,000 worth of food. I'm going to try, but I can't. It's, it's you just wait till World Cup and go to Charlie. Go to Charlie's. Yeah, I like, um, I like five fillets. And uh, I mean, how many lobsters do you have in the back, seriously? Can I get some boxes too to go? I mean, I know I haven't ordered yet, but I'm going to need some. Red Legion here. Have to get on the gas, have to attack. Down by two. Infamous really turning around their program. Struggled here on Saturday, Friday and Saturday a little bit, but it looked amazing this morning. Well, this is not over yet. And I'm sure that uh, Legion has got to be pretty angry with how they let the Hurricanes come back and beat them yesterday. And there's still four minutes left. Infamous realistically needs to get one more point and they need to burn two minutes off and they need to play clean. They lose Hall early. This is not good for Infamous. Yeah, five on three here for Red Legion. As it is starting to rain again too. That always makes things a little bit crazier. So Infamous needs to tighten things up here and try to burn in this five on three, burn as much clock off as possible and hope that Legion gets crazy, gets a penalty or gets sloppy. Thomas makes a great move into the big wing on the drift side. He's shutting off the move forward from the Red Legion player in the snake corner. I believe that's Smotrov. Lloyd's over here in the snake insert, looking to go forward into the snake if he can. He knows that's his best chance for offense over here, but he's got two guys on that gap, so he's got to put one of them in, hope that Smotrov can put the other one in, and with the two of those guys working together, like you can see there. Yeah, they're looking forward in the Perfect center here. Here, here comes Sergey. He's going to come through. He's going to get one. Looks like Salcedo's going to get shot out. There goes Thomas Taylor. And they just, Cali, they can't, they do not concede this point. Cali is just going to have to try to burn as much of this three minutes off as he possibly can here. And Infamous is only going to be up by one. Yeah, Terrible Legion. break for Infamous in this point. Yeah, Red Legion dropping another body, but it's still a three on one here. Ooh, Cali, oh. oh, a major. Wow. A major on. Cali or Red Legion? It's got to be on Cali because they're not playing Red Legion. Players. That would be an, a horrible mistake if that's on Cali. A major when you're up by one in a do it. or die match. I couldn't see it, but I, that's I very unlike Cali. Cali usually does not make that mistake. Well, may, hope they get a replay on it. They didn't immediately turn and run towards Smotrov's no. side, or to the to Legion side, so it might be. Which is be, what I thought we were going to see. I mean, essentially, if Infamous has to start down with three on five, I mean, this it's game two, might as well just tie it up now. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe not. We have seen, I think it was two events ago, there was uh, multiple incidences of the three beating the five. Let's listen in real quick. It's Thomas Taylor. It's not a spin. It's not a spin if I didn't get shot. Bo Milo coming from the stream. They gave them the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get this replay. So there's Tom, uh, sorry, there's Callie, and number it seven. It sounded like Callie was saying, I, I did get shot, but I didn't spin. So right there. there, there you get yeah. shot right there. You can see it. Yeah, it's a yeah. great shot. And that's not off the bunker because it's no. so far there. Yeah, he definitely keeps. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Callie. Yeah, I mean, he got shot two times, it looked like, and was still two pulling the trigger. that we saw. <laughs> no, no, no. Smotrov's like, no no, 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 no. He's like, that was not me. <laughs> Smotrov's like 6'2", and Big John still towers over Smotrov. One of our referees is a yeah. giant out here. Yeah, that's a, just a bad break for Infamous, man. Yeah, he, not let he, that happen. Kelly's a veteran, too. He's he just now having some fun releasing two, two players up the middle. They lose one. Ooh, Carl running on <laughs> Dyson up more head. 
shoot him an extra couple extra times. Oh, by but Mo, Milo over the 45 yard line. Morehead is, Morehead just turned around, looked at Carl, shook his head, and then just waved bye bye to him because that is going to do it as New York Extreme eliminated from competition. But you know what, man? They still had a good event, making it to the top. A better event, yeah. A step forward again. That's what we we're kind of looking to do reset ourselves and kind of get ourselves on our trajectory Put your again. On. Put your on, bud. Three. 3-1 in the prelims, three wins and one loss for New York Extreme to get here to Sunday. It was just also bad luck for New York Extreme that they went 3-1 and one and still had to play in a wild card round. Um, but that we just that's just the way it worked out. And uh, and they drew heat and just didn't have enough for them this morning. See the owner and one of the coaches of the team, Bo Milo, good friend of ours, walking off, getting a spin. Well, Houston Heat will be moving forward to play the Hurricanes. They looked so good this morning. Very crisp, great survivability. And uh, and they made it count and held on to the lead, most importantly. Also take advantage of some of these deals going on this weekend from our sponsors, our presenting sponsor, Bunker Kings. Uh, you get the free Supreme Gloves or free Fly Gloves with $30 purchase. Head to BunkerKings.com to take advantage of that offer. So here we go. Three, should be three bodies out here. We don't really know, Matt, right? Yeah, we're, we're still waiting. We're guesstimating. Jason's in the booth reviewing it. Watch your share. Yeah, waiting to see. Yeah, nobody wants to go out in the rain. I'm wondering, if, let's just talk major, minor. You think that's still major? Well, I think it's- I'm making conversation right now. Definitely a major because a major <laughs> was thrown. If that is, are you asking if it deserved a major? Do you think that was, a, if you were that ref, would you have thrown a major in that situation? I would not have. Neither would I. Yeah, because I don't think it, in fa it changed the game, right? I'm looking at, if a player cheats to change the game, and you know, like all of a sudden, they, if Cali shoots the last guy there, I have yeah. to throw the major, right? Because Russians should have won the Red Legion should have won the point. But if Cali shoots one of the four guys running down the field, and it's a second or two after, it doesn't make. I, I, maybe we could run it back, because uh, also, when did he actually shoot Smotrov? Maybe he thought that he had put a ball in Smotrov, and that Smotrov was the one. Based on what Cali was on. saying in the pit, it didn't sound like that. But, yeah. but Cali was just saying, I didn't spin. Okay, just you know, make <laughs> conversation know. here. Let's get a look. Yeah, it's just because this is a potential, this is a game-altering penalty right here. So I'm looking at Smotrov. So do we just, okay, right there for sure. I still don't see anything on Smotrov. I'm watching Smotrov this Cali whole time. Shot. One, two, yeah. three. I mean, there's, there's three shots on Cali. Yeah. yeah, man, you know what? Four, yeah. And then, okay, and then Smotrov finally gets shot right there. So the, so he was shot three or four times <laughs> and shot and shot someone? Yeah. Yeah, man, technically that is a major. That's ex Definitely the so definition of yes. major. Yes. Getting shot and then shooting somebody is a major. Yes. Three infamous, starting with three here. So on the breakout. Cody Mikowski gets a hard bounce. Oh, it did not bounce. It broke. Oh, it wasn't Cody, it was Sean Salcedo, sorry. Thomas Taylor releasing on the drill side. Five on two, might as well attack. And Legion making pretty quick work here. Still one body left alive though for infamous. And three on one now. Oh, wow. What is going on here? Oh, wow, he shot three of them. Wow. Is that patient again? It might be. Yeah, but yep. Smotrov's going to come through and Smotrov saved that, that point. Yeah, so so Zach Patient made that one really interesting. They went to sleep on Zach Patient. I think he shot three of them. Yeah, he should just do that every point. <laughs> it's way better. <laughs> we got us a game, Maddie. We do have ourselves a game because of a gigantic mistake for Infamous here. So they, look, Legion lost. Yesterday, the Hurricanes. They went up 4-0, and the Hurricanes scored five unanswered on them. So that's got to be in the back of their minds here um, when they squander another, they squander a lead again, and then now thinking, okay, it's time for us to have a comeback. And then they shot a couple bodies, and when it was 4-2, uh, to two, they shot those early bodies and then took advantage of it, came down the field. Um, and then, you know, Cali gets that penalty that then affects this next point because they start with just three. And that anytime you get those majors and you're the last guy left alive, you just cannot get that penalty. Just take your hits and walk off the field because then it affects the next one. So now essentially you're just spotting them that next point too. And absolutely, Rich, you're right. We got ourselves a game. It's four to four. There's not a lot of time left. How much? In the, we're in the wild card round. Man, I didn't see it. I was looking okay. at I that craziness that Patient was doing. Yeah. It's got to be around two and a half, I think. Two thirty. Right around two and a half, maybe. So, I mean, that's still enough time with the way things are going for maybe two more points. So whoever scores this next one will probably, I'm guessing, maybe if it is two and a half, maybe have 45 seconds left, 30 seconds left. And Infamous has struggled in this match two points with penalties, right? Two points that they probably lost because of penalties. So if they can tighten those penalties up, this is, they're probably up by two points here, right? And that's one thing they're gonna have to talk about and think about when they go back. Penalties always gonna kill you. 
Yeah, and it's one of those things that the lower teams and the middle teams do, right? And the top teams usually don't get those penalties. So as you're going up into upper tiers, you really got to be cognizant of that and just tightening and tightening and tightening. And when the top teams do get penalties, they typically can fight through it, a la Dynasty. You know, Dynasty uh, a couple of minutes ago was having some problems getting penalties, but they were still able to come back and get that victory. So. Yeah, the rain coming down again. At least it's a light drizzle. It's not a biblical downpour. Yeah. Two, actually, 207 left. Oh, smush up all of that one. Terrible break here for. Uh oh. Uh, Legion. Smotrop comes off. Is he hurt? No, I hope not. I hope he's just disappointed. Oh, no, Smotrop's down. Smotrop's down. That's not good for Legion. He's one of their oh. four. They're starting. They're going to lose another body. Penalty assessed here on Legion. That pulls off Sergey. It's Malloy. Malloy's wondering what happened. Smotrop's still on the ground over here by the exit of the nets. So, hope he's okay. Two bodies left alive. Yeah, Legion might want to think about conceding this point. Yeah, it's a five on two here. To allow themselves to have enough point time to come back and score another point to tie this match. Smotrop's up and on his feet now, and doesn't he's not limping. So, yeah, I don't know, maybe cramp, or I'm not exactly sure. So after they get Smotrop off the ground, they finally towel it with a minute and 23 left. This one's interesting. It is very interesting. Yeah, the Extreme Heat game was not that interesting, and this one is uh, pretty interesting. Well, it's just mostly heat, right? Yeah. And in, like you said, I greatly appreciate the fact that it's not just dumping on us. Like, I'll take light sprinkle all day long. Light we're actually manageable. in our little pocket up here. We're actually dry. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, well, because in the biblical downpour, like the. Uh, yeah. When the flood <laughs> <it> starts, comes. <laughs> when, the, when the rain Wind. is coming in sideways and the animals are walking in twos. Yeah. Electronics, crazily, don't work very well in the water. The laptops, the monitors, the headsets, they go pretty quickly. There's cars left, talking to their coach right now, trying to figure out what play they're going to run. Historically, Legion is amazing at these really quick points. They always seem to have a couple dialed in. I feel like these are the points that they prefer. It's like a whole uh, team of holidays. I want this point over <laughs> Dan 15 Holiday seconds. Damage. Dan Holiday, one way or the other. I want this point over 15 seconds, win or lose. Rope Ridney, good to see him back. Heart and soul, that team in on that team for well, not quite the beginning, but for a long time now. Since his beginning, for sure. Yeah. Kirill coming out, Malloy, Sergey. Let's see if Smotrop comes out. That's the question. He was on the ground for a little bit. He's coming out for sure. Patient, Jamrose, Taylor, Mikowski for and Rudolph for Infamous. And yes, Motroff is coming out. And he's jogging too. He looks totally fine. He's not limping at all. Yeah, not sure exactly what it was. One point game here, Matty. Red Leeds has got to win this breakout. Infamous has got to get to those key spots if they want to lock this up and grind this point out. They do double up that can, making them a little bit vulnerable. Both teams do. This is the point right now for both of these teams. Infamous just hanging on. Sergey first on the attack for Red Legion. Gets the wing on the Drill side. Let's yeah, makes it up clean. Referee side. running to check out Malloy, doubling up with Smotrop. And the post bunkers get real small, but Infamous is not out wide, though. You can hang out and double up in that bunker and shoot guns uh, for a little bit as long as your opponents aren't out wide. Karzlev is able to make it out wide. He gets into D2. And then Sergey pops the top. They do have to start pushing the issue here. And Infamous able to get really far up the field with Patient, man. Patient's have been having a tournament. Patient all the way into D4. Got to be careful, though. The ref coming in and checking him out. Yeah. And he's clean. He's been playing really well. I mean, event after event, I feel, I feel like he's just right on the edge of breaking through. Malloy now in the snake for Red Legion. I mean, he should just stay down low and just blaze that I center. Agree. Just keep your gun rolling, man. You Never have 30 stop. seconds. Shoot all the paintballs you have right now. Just blow through that pack right now, shooting inside from that D4 position. Don't let him get crazy in that center. That first attack's got to come from the center. Oh, they lose Jamrose. Tough moment for Jamrose to die. And then another body comes out, and here comes Malloy. Malloy's got a gun through. Got to be careful not to get a penalty. He shoots Thomas Taylor. Just two bodies left alive. I think they're going to have enough time to do it unless Cody Mikowski can stop Smotrov. And Smotrov comes through. He might be getting a penalty. Oh, man, Five that seconds. was a close. They're going to have enough time to tie it up. Oh, we're going to see another overtime here. Unbelievable. It all came with Jam Jamrose just needed to stay alive for 10 more seconds, but somehow got clipped in there. Just gunfighting for his life. That's just how good... Man, Legion is so good on these attacks. I thought that once Jamrose, or sorry, once uh, Zach got all the way into D4, 
he was going to be able to shut it down. Well, he just, you know, he has, he's pretty far up the field and has not the greatest angles in the world in the middle. But once our guys start fully committing, but then Jamrose comes off, it loosens it up a little bit, and then they just didn't accurately get their shots. I mean, they're shooting at running targets, and you're in a bunker, but that's just how good Legion is at those running and gunning shots. And then at those moments, you're thinking, okay, penalty, and um, didn't really see anything glaringly obvious as far as, like, okay, that should have been a penalty, that should have right. been a penalty. But, yeah, just a tough break for Infamous. They could not hold off the attack, and they all they only needed two more seconds. If Jamrose had just stayed alive for... 10 more seconds because he was kind of the first chink to fall. Yeah, and Infamous' only problem there is they had good, great penetration on the Drio side, but no penetration on the Snake side. Yeah. When Cali released away from the Snake side, left Jamros the only player over here on the Snake side, and then Jamros got eliminated, really put Infamous in a tough spot. Yeah, and I don't, don't want to kick. Jonas had a great event. No. And it happened. You didn't get shot. Jonas but. is ruining this team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's tough. It's yeah. tough out there. He's been playing great. His dad was super nice to bring over some of his mom's amazing cookies. Oh, did, did I give you that cookie? Because they specifically gave me a cookie to give to you. Yeah, no, I didn't get any cookies, oh, but thanks, Rich. Sorry, man. Good looking out, bro. Super sorry. It, you know, if it makes you feel better, they weren't as good as they usually are. They were probably only like a 9.5, 9.9. <laughs> usually they're 10. I guess maybe a timeout here, Maddie? Okay, who took an extra barrel plug out there? I couldn't find well, it. We're just yeah. two minutes waiting for the... Uh, well, I'm wondering what they're going to do and exactly how much time was left because we've seen it multiple times this weekend where they'll play the one second. Just to rest. Just their... to get the rest. Wow. So they didn't, they hit it with less than a second left. That's, That's crazy. how close it was. That's what I was saying. Like if they just had it, literally a second more of survivability. Let's look at how this broke down. So there's Malloy inside. And let's see, Malloy comes through. And Melissa, so this is, yeah, Jonah had already walked off. And then there goes that kill. And then here comes the finish from Smochoff. So, so he comes through headhunt and almost stab each other. And yeah, he did not get shot until maybe the very end. And then they hit it with, I mean, they both get their same time. Kirill edges out Karzlev, though. And we are going to go straight to overtime. So literally less than a second. They, they, it's as close as it possibly can get heading straight to overtime. I talked to Alex, the coach. Actually, that's exactly the timing they broke worked oh, on in practice. Perfect. Yeah. Within, you know, half a second or so. Red Legion taking the field on the red side of the field. Is it me or is it just getting really dark out here? It's right getting now? really dark. <laughs> I was just, I was like, it's kind of ominous. Yeah. It's not raining yet, but it just got way I think darker. It's, I think it's raining a little bit. Oh, it's raining, but it's not like, uh, it's not pouring. It doesn't seem to be raining as hard as you would think it's raining with. Nobody's building large how, boats. How dark it is. Five on five breakout, Matt. Big yep. bite on the drill side for Red Legion. A huge bite. Did he make it in clean? And it looks like he is going to take the walk. So they take a big risk. Send Karzlev all the way to D5, and he doesn't make it. Did anyone from Infamous fall? They yep. did. Four, four. four on four situation here. Both teams taking a big bite on the drill side. Both teams losing their first attacker. Infamous, the first team to attack back up the middle with two players, both in the wings looking inside. So, yeah, no, yeah, no one on the D side, though. Uh-oh. Oh, oh Callie Rudolph. Callie Rudolph getting shot out of his spot wow. from that can. That At least just three players happened. left alive for Infamous to try to save their tournament. Legion still doubling up that can. It's a four-on-three situation in favor of Legion. Red Legion's success in this point is going to come down to, I think, whether or not they can keep Jonas out of the snake. If Jonas can get the snake, work his way down there, get a couple key kills, Infamous has got a chance, but the two players in the center of the field are kind of stuck in those spots. They've got to sit there and play defensively. Yeah, I mean, this... Yeah. This was Infamous's game to win. They made too many mistakes to even get them to overtime. Too so bad. now someone needs to be a hero. Now they need someone to step up. And it, it's either going to be uh, Jonah Jamrose by himself over here, Snakes. So they got Sean Salcedo and Thomas Taylor, who's been having a tournament out here. Um, but they are looking at four bodies. Now, for Legion, with this extra body out here, with three minutes and 40 seconds to work with, they need to not get crazy. Find out exactly where these guys are and which way they seem to be looking, and then start your attack. Go for sure, because Salcedo's looking towards the D side, Thomas is looking towards the snake side, and then Jonah right now is wrapping around snake side. And oh. sure enough, they wait, and Malloy's going to get all the way into D5, and I don't know if they, they know he's there. I love when Malloy switches to offense. You know, Usually he likes to play the, like, the cleanup role, let somebody else go, like Smochop, go through, and then he follows up. But when he switches to offense, he can be very, very sneaky. 
Well, no one has a gun on Malloy right now. And Salcedo, oh, who's well, oh, Thomas Taylor? Them. Thomas Taylor switches his gun at the exact perfect moment. Spidey sense is tingling, and now it's a three on three. Oh, oh but then Thomas goes right into Kirill's gun. No, Sergey was Sergey has got outside contained. Jonah Jamros dives, and he gets shot out, and that is going to do it here as Salcedo gets bunkered out by Kirill Peridney. And Legion able to make the most of these infamous mistakes and punch their ticket into the quarterfinals. Eliminating Los Angeles Infamous. Great job by Legion to stay composed. And after losing a Battle game back, against right? the Hurricanes, where they were up 4-0 to zero yesterday, they have a come-from-behind victory of their own with some dramatic moments. So that is going to do it for the... A lot of heart on that team. A lot of heart. Never gave up. That is going to do it for the wild card rounds. Infamous going home. Legion going on. Going to be taking on AC Diesel. And Houston Heat going to move on and play the Hurricanes. Coming up next, quarterfinal battles. Going to be level and dynasty and X-Factor and impact in the quarterfinals here at the 2022 NXL Windy City Major presented by Bunker Kings. I'm Matty Marshall with Rich Telford here on Go Sports. Stick with us. We'll be back. Historically, the Chicago event brings out the beast in the best, as it has always been one of the hardest events to win, since you are deep into the season, and there are no more excuses. Every team has had time to sharpen their skills, refine their lineups and their weapons. All eyes are on the top teams as favorites at the battle that's about to go down in the Windy City. San Diego Dynasty sits in the number one spot with four major victories in a row. Houston Heat is in second overall, though it has been over a year since they hoisted a first place trophy. Impact and damage are tied for third, but they have both put up wins in 2022. Though the smart money is on these top teams, Pro Paintball has never been this competitive. It upsets lurk and surprises await for any of the old guard who sleep on this new crop of talented and hungry pro players who have arrived to earn respect. It is unsure if this new blood is ready to win an event of this magnitude. Tune in September 9th through the 11th and find out as the best paintball players and teams in the world gunfight at the NXL Windy City Major only on GoSports.com. Just two events left in the 2022 NXL season. Let's take a look at the state of pro paintball and the hierarchy of merit that has materialized through the battles at the four events so far. At the end of the season, a prize awaits. The very first NXL Champions Cup and the $40,000 that comes with it. Four dominant teams sit at the top of our sport. Names that many fans have become familiar with over the past years as they have proven yet again to be the best of the best. And then look at this finish. Archie is refusing to give on the bigger man here, Goldman. They're unstoppable. They haven't lost a game in two events. Unbelievable historic performance here yet again from San Diego Dynasty. Completely dismantled Houston Heat. San Diego Dynasty is in the number one spot. The boys in blue have been on a run the past two seasons as they have chalked up four major victories in a row. Five of the last nine events. Their potent mix of experience, aggression, and lethal creativity have earned them the right to call themselves the best team in the game at least for now. Houston Heat sits in second overall, though it has been over a year since they hoisted a first place trophy. They have been a pillar of consistency, making it to every Sunday, and the worst they've done is sixth place. Heat keeps losing close games to stop their run on Sundays, but their roster contains some of the biggest superstars in paintball, and they are well overdue for another win. Mitzen Impact's gonna win this game here. I think they have enough bodies as Jacob Edwards gonna be able to hold them off. Impact and damage are tied for third. They have both put up wins in 2022. 
Tampa Bay damage after a 10-year drought finally brought home another victory in dramatic fashion when the final game in Texas came down to one-on-ones. They did it running two different lines, proving the talent and the depth of their roster. Oh, and Jacob Edwards dropped the coast-to-coast -coast shot. First time since in about 10 years. On the other hand, Edmonton Impact was able to ride a small roster to victory at the open event in Sacramento. In the final three games of the tournament, Impact outscored their opponents 18 to one. They should be at full strength the rest of the year. And that full roster is a murderer's row of all-stars. So based on what we've seen so far, these top four teams are the big favorites moving forward. But there have been upsets at every event. And as we go down the ranks, all of these teams have an outside chance at impressive finishes as we head towards the first Champions Cup. In fifth place, Seattle Thunder is a mixture of two teams trying to become one unit. They have been impressive early into this new venture, shocking the paintball world by making it to Sunday for two events in a row and making it into the top four in Sacramento. After a slow start to the year, both Baltimore Rebels. We are back, 2022 NXL Windy City Major presented by Bunker Kings. We're jumping into the quarterfinals. Right now it's gonna be level, taking on Dynasty and X Factor and Impact and the heavy rain has just started coming down. Here a little this, outside of Chicago. This is condensation, man. Rich, I don't know. If, I don't. I think. I think it's gonna. Maybe be, in Southern California. I don't think the heavy rain. stuff's gonna start in coming Northern down for California, a bit. We don't call this rain. This is more like a mist, like a coastal layer type well, of a situation. The first point we're gonna see it's gonna be the Edmonton Impact taking on X Factor. These poor guys. Now this is a rematch from the bracket we saw in the prelims, where X Factor was able to prevail over Impact mm -hmm. in overtime. It was a close one-point battle. And maybe we'll hopefully gonna see the same thing here. Did you like playing in the rain? Some guys. Sometimes like I did actually like playing in the rain. It, it would depend on sometimes. it depend on how the conditions were. I like playing in the rain if uh, if it's not muddy, and it's not muddy yet. So yeah. I always liked the rain because it kind of slowed everybody down to my speed, <laughs> and it brought everyone's accuracy down to my level. It definitely well. made it memorable very quickly, though. As Laval gets shot on a transition, trying to take ground in the center because San Antonio X Factor gets LJ Parrish all the way up into D5 yeah. immediately. That and it gets right to the 50. This could be problem, a problem here for Impact. Nick, Nick, Nick made that move kind of lazily, as if. X Factor hadn't taken all that penetration. Yeah, he just didn't know there was, and it looks like Goldman gets shot trying to get up into D2. So Alex Goldman playing on the G Jack. side here at this event. And yeah, Matt Jackson's coming off. Two on five, Matty. Just back down to two. Three to one and Snake Can. So Snake three. Can's maybe Rap, Justin Rap. No, I can't see who's in the Snake Parrish Can. Parrish runs in to trade out with Cornell. That leaves just, oh, just Axel. Axel out there. Axel on a four on one here in this first point. X-Factor shooting really well in the break. Man, that's a lot of rain. Yeah, so uh, Goldman <laughs> ended up getting taken out there. And, uh, and I mean, yeah, just so Laval first taken out, uh, trying to get to the center. They just didn't know the parish had taken that much yeah. ground on the D side. And that's why you take those big risks on the break. And I and so Goldman tried to make it out wide D1, D2. Not a big uh, a, a, a bump, but you know, Parrish had just taken so much ground. So Parrish really setting the tempo and the pace over there on the D side. And that really helped X Factor put up the first point. And they closed out nicely as well, too. So, you know, playing a team like Impact, regardless of the you know, conditions out here, they're really good, even when there's only a couple bodies left alive. And we saw Mouse pull off a one on two yesterday. And uh, Axel Godin was able to pull off two one on threes. So, that was just a really nice close there from, from X Factor, given the situation. Here we're going jumping into this next match. Dynasty on the right. Going to their similar Houston Heat breakout. Level yeah, on the, the left. The question here, Rich, right, is breakout. does does Level have the mental toughness to come out here and, and go blow for blow ascending a dynasty? You know, so, we know they're they're good enough. Yeah. But the issue is, is that can they execute on Sunday and take down the Titans that are ascending a dynasty? Dynasty's been on a run. They're trying to win. Uh, I think it's their fifth major in a row here. It's kind of like a long, slow game of chicken with, with these two teams, right? Dynasty's going to get in the spots. They're going to control the field. They're going to try and make you flinch. They're going to try and make you attack. And can Level stay there long enough, focused, concentrated, make their shots to stay in the game against Dynasty? Level loses their first attacker over here on the snake side as Dynasty moves into the snake and the 50 Dorito. So here comes a counterattack from Lemon as Lemon comes down and bunkers out. That Dalton oh, drawing a red. major penalty, though, so too bad. tough break here for Level. It's probably going to throw this point away as Archie going to be moving up here to the 50-yard line. You know, one of the things I'm most impressed about Level, Matt, is their twos. 
I think levels twos play as well or better than the twos on all the other squads. I mean, they do a really good job of attacking, counterattacking, following up their ones. Even with that penalty, yeah, their, their timing's great. So we're talking about uh, Askren, talking about Lemon, we're talking about Weber. Weber yep. Those three, those three those players three. are absolutely outstanding with the timing. We're in the pits right now, San Diego Dynasty. As they go up by one on level. This is Mike Arena. He's working on that stash. Marcelo Margot, Blake Yarber. Ten seconds here. Impact breaking out the red side. Had a rough first point. See if X Factor can do the same thing again, or if Impact can answer back. Impact doubling up the back center, not getting an elimination though. Oh, as I say that, Colt Roberts walks out of the back center, so a little bit of an advantage here early on for Impact as they get their first kill. And with the way that Colt's been playing. Yeah, that's the one guy you want off the field, right? Yeah. JC, JC over there in the uh, Drita one for Impact with the inside, he's got J-Rab inside of him. Yeah, so Parrish up and on his feet at D1. Looking like he might want to move up for X Factor there, top right of your screen. Impact, five bodies alive for them here currently. 13.25, just getting things kicked off. If you just joined us, we're in the quarterfinals. X Factor releasing in the center of the field. Two yeah. players, one in the wing, one in the tower. So they're keeping Billy Bernaccia in the center this time, not risking him up that snake side. Yeah. I feel well, like it, it might be easier to make it in the rain, though. Yeah, but also, it, the, the snake bunker now, uh, the snake player on the snake side is kind of a neutral player. He's kind of out of the fight until no one's shooting at him. So I don't think they want to take Billy away from a, a, a spot where he can engage, shoot people, and kind of, you know, do some work. So it makes sense to have Billy go up and do some work, have Rainey kind of play that smart, sneaky, sneaky snake style. For sure. TJ Danner getting in there with Billy Bernaccia. Uh, great one-two punch there in the center wings. They've got three impact players in front of them. Justin Rabikoff is in the center little brick. Yeah, Jay Rab's in that good attacking position here. 50-yard line, middle of the field, pops the top, looking like he wants to go. And then TJ Danner also pops the top. And there here he comes Justin, he knows where he is. He's gonna come through, he's gonna get one. And he might be able to get two. Nope, just trades out. That's still good though. Yep. And because off of that, move being made is gonna get up, now, now mirrored up here with Billy. And impact. They were and they're oh. already up a body, so the math is right. And he gets that shot in on <coughs> Billy as well, too, so. We got us a game, Matty. Ooh, but Rainey goes into the snake. I don't think they know that they Rainey made it in there. They definitely don't. Rainey they're just running down the center. But I don't think he knows that Zupa's in front of him. Oh, he does, he eats up Zupa. Oh, Rainey's gonna possibly able to get it. Rainey gets one, gets two. Rainey Stanzik might be saving this point. He's still got one more body to kill. There's still a body left alive in the center of the Rainey field, and here comes and the Parrish. Rainey figured that one out, too, and then Parrish runs through to hit the buzzer as Rainey's like, let's just make sure that everyone's dead. What a beautiful job by Rainey Stanzik. He's definitely on the list playing for that thousand bucks. Shows you again how powerful that snake is if you can sneak in there, Matt. He snuck in there, shot the guy in front of him, got, what, two more kills after that? Oh, yeah, Rainey, so good in those moments. Clutch. To get, what, a three-pack? Two-pack for sure. Two-pack for sure. Yeah. But definitely the game-changing or the point-changing move out there. Yeah, and if they win that match, you know, if, if Impact can't come back because they're down by two and they've got to start forcing it a little bit, that's a, that's a big play. In this next match, we got level three on the blue side of the field. Dynasty, the boys from San Diego on the red side. Dynasty doing the Houston Heat. Breakout, very similar. X Factor also doing a very similar breakout. Most teams doing a very similar breakout here. No one's risking anyone, anything snake side. If they do risk, they risk Dorito. Yeah, Sunday. <clears throat> Sunday paintball, right? Try not to, I mean, it's it's the risk versus reward equation. Level does risk the corner and gets eliminated. Kind of a big risk. They do take the Dorito side, though, so they get up to the, the three or four brick. San Diego Dynasty up a body here, but well, running referee going to be checking out one of the players here for level. Going to see a minor penalty assessed there in level. Level struggling now. This is two points in a row to start out the game. Getting penalties in both of those points, giving Dynasty gifts to work with. It's going to be a matter of time. Dynasty figures out where these last bodies are. And here comes Blake Yarber dropping the hammer, forcing the towel. From Coach Tyler. X Factor coming back out. Impact coming back out after a quick point from Dynasty there. Not a lot of time to retool. I got that last point from Brady if you want it. So let's get a look here as we're checking in the pits with a level that needs to tighten things up a bit at this 
Awesome replay of Rainey Stanzik. So Rainey gets in there. So we didn't see him dive in, but he got in there un... un no one saw him get in there. And then he stitches up Zupa. He gets that inside kill. And then he's waving at Parrish, but there's still a body left alive. And so Parrish is like, nah, Rainey, we got some work to do still. He runs through, gets that last kill. And then you see Rainey actually is like, gets gunned back up again. And he's just going to go right back at that D side. Whereas Parrish is now, no, we're, we're good, Rainey. We're I good. Him. I got him. So nice little combo of Rainey Stanzik and LJ Parrish to put the second point on the board for X Factor. And that's how it stands. Now, Axel with 11 Gun. minutes and 42 seconds left to go here versus Impact. Sorry, Matty. Axel got dinged right to Snake 2 in the break. Huge move by Axel. Goes right around the corner, gets in unmolested. And that's a big play call here from Dave Huge and Bart risk. because Huge risk it's a big reward. risk, but Axel has been absolutely outstanding at this event, and if he can get into that snake, it's really going to give you a huge advantage because, you know, X-Factor not sending a body here because they have the two-point lead to protect, so they didn't want to take that risk. Yeah, and... In in X Factor playing a little conservative on the break, not doubling up back center, not holding someone you know in the back center to try to get that snake shot because Impact hasn't been going out wide. So don't you know don't waste the extra shooter on a team that's playing the pocket. Axel now all the way to the 50 snake for Impact. I believe that they know he's in there. Yeah, they do. Matt Jackson going to get in behind a couple nice moves here from Matt Love Jackson. Love the secondary in there. Yeah, to get behind uh, so Axel as body comes off. Randy getting shot. It's not looking good for X Factor. They still have some bodies out there, but. We got Jackson and Godin here in the snake, and no one's looking at Axel. Well, just the back, back center. Yeah, they, they've, they just. This is the power of the snake, man. If you take the risk, there is a huge reward. They do lose the ball. The ball struggling a little bit here, Matty. Axel falls on the inside. There goes Colt Roberts. He's coming off. Axel and Jackson trying to break this one open. Yeah, good solid point here for Impact. Off of the uh, big move, off Axel Gogden and Matt Jackson following up now. Oh, look at Goldman running down yeah. Parrish here Golden, to finish things off. Yeah, Goldman just ran down bonus ball. It wasn't even in the point. It just came down to smash hairs of Parrish, though. And he stares him down, too. Yeah. <laughs> Goldman is just glaring over. He's just, just dagger-eyeing Parrish off the field. They're still down a point right now, though, but that was an excellently played point and a gutsy play call. Mouse is fired up. Fired up mouse is a scary mouse. Nice to come back out against level. Big moment for Columbus level. These points have gone fast, so they have a lot of time to work with. But the big question for them coming in was was uh, you know was level ready mentally to go deep again on Sunday, but take down Dynasty first. And you can see there, they look at Goldman. He hits that buzzer and then just dagger eyeing L.J. Parrish. L.J. Parrish is like, I'm, Parrish, not trying to, yeah. I'm not trying to get involved with that Parrish, situation. Parrish isn't even regarding him. <laughs> that is a look of evil right there, evil intent on behalf of Alex Goldman. See if Dynasty changes up anything? No. Why would they? I love how deep back center guy for Dynasty sits off the box, Josh Rouse, shooting that snake cut. It's such a great cut, and if no one shoots you off of it, you can you have a huge advantage shooting the snake corner in the, in the insert. Well, the down four continues here. Is getting a little slip and slidey out right now. Level slips and slides up into the tower, and then there goes a overslide for Archie. Might have cost him his body. Now it looks like he's good to go. 13, still 13 minutes left. Is Dynasty losing Frazier, though, from that D side? And about to lose Rao from wow. that center. Great move from the level player, moving into this brick in the snake and catching Yosh Rao on the transition. Oh, great move in the snake now, though, for Archie. But I think he's he doesn't know he's caught. there. Might be a three pack for, can't see him a little blocked out. Uh, it's Weber. Weber's, yeah, Weber's, uh, Weber's playing. so good. Just like you were saying earlier, these twos are so, so good. More often than not, Weber is at the right place at the right time. Got himself a little three-pack here in this. Yeah, Weber if he, can, if he can finish this off and get a four-pack, this might be Asking. up in the running <clears throat> as well, too, for the 1000 bucks. He got him. That's a big point there. If, if Level came back and win this match, that would be a, a huge point, right? So it's going to be a one-point spread, courtesy Corwin Weber. Yeah, with looking at how Level's played the last couple events just from what we've seen out of Weber. So Danny Schoenauer made the all-star team. But if I had to go back and look at, you know, I'd also have to take a hard look at how, at Silberg and Weber for sure as far as potential all-stars. So as if Level can keep that team together in the next couple seasons, you may see Sam Silberg or Weber make 
uh, make an all-star team. I mean, Askren's really good too. Lemon's really good too. I mean, that's why they've been able to go deep. But do they have enough to take down Dynasty? There's still so much time. This could be a really good back and forth game though, a slugfest in the rain. That would be amazing. Maybe a little overshooting, a little chirping back and forth. Oh, please, give it to us. Mouse is fired up. He could go on a roll for sure. We're trying to entertain the world right here, okay? <sighs> is that so wrong? Hashtag that so go wrong? paintball. So let's let's let's, oh. let's have some entertaining matches. Axel getting eliminated on the break. Tried to run and shoot to the corner. Colt Roberts said, I don't think so. X Factor, five alive. No, uh, they lose Billy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, both Four teams alive. losing their snake attacker. Axel coming off uh, and Billy Bernacci coming off. X Factor, two attackers, both in the Doritos. Colt Roberts, defense in the tower. And Ra uh, Rainey over here in the can on the snake side for X Factor. Four on four. X Factor in better position to attack with LJ Parrish. L you know, LJ's just hoping he gets to a spot where he can see if Mouse gets shot walking off the field. Great field to the corner there. Couldn't see who that was, but it was a good field in that corner. Great impact. Yeah, getting out to the back corner bunker. So Over dark. Ball. I so think hard might, to see. Yeah, I think it might be Jackson. Yeah, I think it's Matt. Matt? Okay, yeah, good fill. Yeah. And then the ball's inside for oh. cross field. Good cross field spread right now for Edmonton Impact. Uh, yeah, yeah number 21 under screen there, Matt Jackson. Laval looking like he wants to move up the center. Yeah. Roberts is already up there. Laval doing a good job of communicating in that pocket, getting the information back and forth between Jackson in the corner and his Dorito players. LJ Parrish staying over the top there for a long time. Dips into Drew to four. He's on the wrap. He's got a wrap around the outside until he can find the shot on the ball. The ball's in the blocking position in the wing here. Drew to side. He catches LJ Parrish. Yeah, the ball moved up and waited for him. Great shot there for Leave Laval to get that, to get the kill on Parrish. Parrish has uh, obviously been a huge component of the starting lineup over there on the D side for San Antonio X Factor. And then Rainey going to go into insert bunker here, snake side. Matt Jackson filling the snake now, Matt. Gets into snake two. Rainey mirrors him up. So both teams with a player here in snake. Impact with an advantage having two players here on the snake side. And now Nick Laval releasing inside. Rainey doesn't know he's there. Rainey's about to pop the top into Laval's gun. Oh, Laval didn't have his gun up. Oh, Rainey going to do a little tactical retreat here. Smart. I really don't know if the ball has the shot for me. That pin might be in the I way. I think the pin's in the way. The pin's in the way right now. But regardless, Rainey's got three guys in front of him engaging with him. So a lot of pressure. He's got to play really smart here. He's on the island. He's the only player on this side of the field for his team. So if he's eliminated, it'll allow the other team to push down that tape and probably get the win. Yeah, Jackson and the snake. Cornell has come over to help Jackson and the ball out. So Rainey's exploring, but I just, I don't know if he knows where everyone is. Yeah, I think he just got shot inside, popping that top like we just talked about. Oh, he's gonna catch a couple extra here from Jackson. Is Jackson making sure he's dead? And then now they're gonna try to get the inside shot on Cole, who's just blazing away, trying to make something happen. And Matt Jackson's gonna finish this one off. Beautiful job by Matt Jackson and Laval. Yeah, I got Weber's three pack uh, for level up. So let's get a look here at the, as we head into this next point with level and dynasty. At Weber's little three pack, man. We talked about how good these second attackers, we call them the twos, here are for Columbus level. And Corwin Weber is one of the best. You know, he just always seems to be right place, right time. Got that great talent of the timing and just stays in that, in the pocket right there to get that outside kill, gets that other kill cross field, and then runs through to tap out that last body. Excellent job there to keep to keep level in this game. 100% clutch. And the more and more levels in these situations, playing on Sunday, playing against top teams, making clutch moves, even if they're not winning, they get closer and closer, and they get that experience and confidence. They still, I mean, there's a lot of time left, and they're only down by one. They shoot, uh, do not shoot a body on the break. Thought for a second line shot, Greenspan, big wrist and Greenspan all the way here up in the snake, off the break, referee in there, <laughs> slips and falls, and then it's gonna pull out. Blake Yarber. Level lobs, drops the body at the same time, Maddie 4 on 4. Better field position, though, for San Diego Dynasty as they have the highest vote getter for the All Star uh, team in the entire league, Ryan Greenspan here, 40 years old. But like a young 40. Playing the best baseball he's ever played. 
Up in the snake now for Dynasty. Trying to, oh, oh he but he caught. goes into a gun, though, so a little bit too <clears throat> big of an ask, or too big of a move here. Kind of shows his lack of experience there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Archie, though, fills in behind. And again, the, the second guy a lot of times in the snake, man, it's going to be the guy who ends up winning the point. The guy in the front gets in there, takes the big risk, and it makes it really easy for the second guy to follow him up and get in that snake and control from that position. Rich, I just like that Dynasty is putting an emphasis on this snake. The I team that too. wins this tournament, We'll see, but most likely it will be the team that can prevail on this snake side because it's difficult over here. So t getting the right timing, I and mean, we see so many points stolen from the snake side. Yeah, and you can't—you don't have to win the snake side, but you can't lose it, right? Exactly. It's, that's exactly what it is. Well, we've seen well, some teams go a little bit more defensive and buy their time, but they're still either closing from that or, like you said, not losing that side. Yeah. Look at this, though. It looks like uh, Chase able to get past the 50-yard line here for Dynasty and get a kill. It's looking pretty good on the D side for level, but looking good on the snake side for Dynasty. Archie's hunting, trying to find that last body. It's a one on two. Yeah, Archie, I think, finally is, for, through process of elimination, has figured out where Corwin is as Corwin tries to run in and get a shot in on Marcelo, not able to do it. So great job by Marcelo and great job by Archie out there to get it done for San Diego Dynasty to extend their lead. Yep. Two point match now, a little over 12 minutes left. Lots of time, but Dynasty's playing really, really well. And that's what Dark Horse teams do. They play well, mm -hmm. especially on Sunday. Rich Chelfer's Dark Horse. Hey, when they lost that first game on Saturday, it was like, oh, Dynasty's done. Dynasty's breaking up. I'm like, no, I believe in my Dark Horse team. They're going to come through strong. I know they're a new up-and-coming team, but I believe in them. LJ Parrish needs to have a big game over here. Yeah, LJ Parrish, the main attacker for X Factor on that D side. He's been so good for them. And then Edmonton Impact, they got uh, Mouse going that way. Interesting to send Mouse to the D side, who became a legend in this game, playing on the Snake side. But the way the Axel's been playing, to have Axel on the, uh, Axel might have got clipped though, trying to go into the Snake here off the break. Took a hard bounce for sure, referee's in him. And he's okay, looks like. Good Looking gotcha. Like the, yeah, yeah, taking the walk here for X Factor, it's not gonna help things out. For X Factor here in this point. Just six minutes and 37 seconds left to go. Axel getting into the snake. 50 here for impact. Yeah, hold off on the 50. But Rainey's able to get out to the snake corner. Which will make it much more challenging for Axel to do work over here in the snake. Because now I'll have to contend with the tape. Can't just go forward, wrap and put pressure on the center of the drill side now. Level's got to get up in here on the snake side. We've got two of the can, one of the tower, a snake side, one of the drill to one, but they're all playing defensive positions. Very, very yeah. close match here, 2-2. Yeah. Two, two. Yeah, so ne neither team with a lead to protect Rich also is part of the conversation for us too, right? So Impact with, looks like up a body. Five bodies live for sure for Impact, and I think just four for X Factor. We could get an eye in the sky look on that red side to see exactly, yeah, so yeah, three. Four bodies, yeah, four bodies alive for X-Factor. You can't see one here on your screen on the outside bunker on the snake side, but their their power is on the D side. So X-Factor is gonna have to start pushing that D side, but they also have to contend with Axel God in at this 50 yard line. Tactically, this point's getting really interesting here. Yeah, and it could be a long, long, slow point, right? Because neither one of these teams can make a mistake. And they don't have a lead to protect or they don't have a, uh, you know, a deficit yeah. and to again, attack to get out. Yeah. Winner goes home on and loser goes home, so nobody wants to go home. No one wants to come out here and play in the mud and the rain and then have to pack your muddy, wet stuff up and go home a loser. Oh, great move into the snake there from Matt Jackson. Love his timing over here, Matt. Really playing well. And look at this, though, on your screen as getting great into the battle. snake with Rainey. That's but a great battle, Matt, Matt Jackson and Rainey, both smart. Oh, and Rainey takes the walk this time. Yeah, as Axel's just doing exactly what he's been doing all weekend long, staying alive, taking ground, and playing smart once he gets into those treacherous spots. I mean, Axel, if Impact goes through and wins this tournament, making a strong argument for MVP. For sure, yeah. Going to the hardest spot on the field and consistently getting in there and staying alive is... It's a big, big challenge. Yeah, he's had two one-on-threes that he's pulled off. Uh, he's stacked up constantly in situations like this, or you know, point after point, where he's getting in there, staying alive, not doing anything crazy, closing it out intelligently. Yeah, I mean, it, I think he might be the most consistent guy on impact right now, and they obviously had a pretty good run through the prelims, other than losing to X Factor. A lot of top snake guys have been getting shut down, right? This is one of those snakes that it's very, very challenging, and if, you're, if you can stand out, that's amazing. It's a big, big help for your team.
Dynasty so good on the break. Exact same break out again. Yosh staying super deep, shooting that cut, making it so nobody can take the snake on the break against him. Level releasing with two players, one to the snake side wing, one to the drill side tower. Ryan Greenspan taking the walk early from the uh, drill side tower there. Huge kill for Level to try to get back in this match. Five on four situation, 10, 12 to go. And Dynasty gonna get up into that first wedge there towards the D side. I think that's Yosh Rao. Columbus Level gonna double stack those wedges in the center of the field and have a little bit of ground on that D side. They're at D3, the backhands, both wedges. No one on the snake side quite yet here for level. Dynasty with Archie Montemayor has been doing a really good job. He's on your screen, so he'll back up off that spot and then actually didn't even need to back up on it, just was able to get across no problem. Yeah, I wonder if that's the rain a little bit, making those gaps a little bit harder. Well, he's also, up. he's been backing up off that spot and actually getting out real wide as they lose another body. It's Alex Frazee taking the walk. So three on four advantage here for level, <laughs> Matt? Alex Frazee, our MVP from this event last year. Yeah, just three bodies on the field right now for Dynasty, and Archie oh. knows that, so he's just going to run through. Wow. He gets clipped going in. That would have been a big, big move for Archie if he got in that snake. And Yosh trying to create here. It does get that kill cross field. Oh, but he gets caught over the top for too long. Didn't know he had shot that guy, so he's trying to put extra pressure to keep him from going forward, but gets caught doing so. Looks like Level's going to win this point, Matt. Wow. Level's got a game here. A lot of time left, it's gonna be a one point game. Level looking good. Yeah, level pulling yeah, within one with a lot of time to play in this down four as the rain has just been steady pretty ah, much this entire geez. set. This isn't rain. <laughs> I'm wondering when it, it when it's gonna get muddy. This this ground does an amazing job of of uh of eating up the water, but the puddles are starting in the pits right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm not going down anymore. So, You're gonna have to be just... bringing me my fluids and my lunch. <laughs> a bottle of peanut, because it looks real wet down there. Let's listen to the Dynasty right now in the pits. A little less composure in that pit than I would expect. Ryan's begging I, I, people to go to spots. For Dynasty, I like the energy, though. Dynasty is a team that plays well when they have energy in the pits. They've always been that way, you know, screaming out their chance and getting guys pumped up. They're not the stoic team in the pits that some other squads you like to see. I like to see Dynasty with emotion as the rain continues to increase here. <laughs> you see that? Roberts is slipping and sliding up in that center. He slid to the tower, went past it. He's like, ah, just keep going. Just keep going, yeah. Billy Bernacci had to start his yeah, You really have to start your slide much earlier than you normally would, and it's getting a little bit worse and worse. <clears throat> so, but oh, it looks like yeah. a five-on-five -five break. Better field it's position. It's officially Currently coming down doctor. now, Matt. Yeah. It's official. One-point spread. Here with just four minutes and 17 seconds left in this one, a little bit less time left in this one than the uh, level dynasty match in this set. Yeah, X Factor with a little bit more of an offensive posture here with two players at the center of the field, Billy Bernacci and Cole Roberts. Impact sitting back two in the can, one in the drill one, one in the tower on the drill side. Move out wide here for X Factor to make it out to the back corner bunker on the snake side. I think he made it in clean. Axel's still doubling up that can over there. He's got to get out of that can if he wants to get the snake. And then Rainey going to get Ooh, Rainey gets the snake, the snake one. Yeah, he big. went out wide, made it clean, and then dives into the snake. So good job by Rainey to get up the field. It's funny how the rain quiets the field down. Like, you can not you can barely hear the guns. You can hear, barely hear the guys talking. DJ Danner also moving up here. So X Factor making a, a series of nice secondary moves to put them in attacking, a little bit better attacking position. Still have some work to do to get up the field on the D side. They're in great spots in the center, and then Rainey's at snake two, but they have three minutes and 18 seconds left to work with, and they're only down by one. Yeah, I think I'd like to see Rainey put a little more pressure going forward, put a little more pressure on Axel in that can. This might be the deciding point, Rich, with the rain and the way that this is kind of shaken out. Well, if Impact can win it, it's definitely going to be a deciding point. Well, uh, yeah, Not but just, just the way, so yeah. Impact is going to be content to seem to sit in their spots for yep. now and let X Factor push into them, whereas X Factor is making these moves, but they're making them very methodically. See, Impact still doubling up that back center. Uh oh, Rain's oh, getting Rain checked, getting checked out. And he's oh, gonna draw gonna be a penalty. A yellow, ouch, that really hurt. Penalty assessed here on San Antonio X Factor. 
It's going to fall off Colt Roberts. Yeah, a little mental error there. Might have cost him this match. And X Factor making three Sundays in a row, gone deep with the last one. Colt Roberts not happy, getting pulled down on that penalty. Immediately looked over, saw who was walking off in front of him so he can go talk to him in the pit. <clears throat> Four, oh. I mean, sorry, five on three advantage here for Impact as X Factor continues to attack. Rich, no concession from Ryan Brand. He has three bodies out there left sorry, alive. And yeah, well, just he didn't okay, do it. Did you say something? Well, he didn't do it right away. And since he didn't well, do it at the second that he saw that the second body drop, then I figured maybe he's going to let him give him a chance in the rain. Listen, I'm not supposed to tell anybody, but Ryan's getting a little soft. Okay, he's getting <laughs> a little soft. He definitely could have beat that, you know, five, ten seconds earlier. But yeah, forced X Factor into it. So I like the fact that the X Factor guys were still attacking, knowing that they were down by a point. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Ryan just didn't have confidence they would be able to get through that line. Impact in a real good position here to go forward. So one point separates these two teams as well, too. San Diego Dynasty. Two amazing matches here. Tight. Tight game right now. Let's see if Dynasty wants to sit back and just outplay level, or if they want to play a little offense. Looks like they want to sit back and outplay him. Level getting a check over here on the Drill side. Richie's <clears throat> just gone a lot faster. Eight minutes and 30 uh, seconds is still left in this one. Four on four, man, as Archie takes the walk for Dynasty. That really hurts. Archie's been playing really, really well for Dynasty over here on the Snake side. These these uh, sneaky Snake players like that are, that are playing the Snake, like Rainey and Matt Jackson, Really, really doing a lot of service to their teams over here. Wow, big move by Ryan Greenspan. Gets two in the middle there. Gets shoots the first one, runs the second one down. At the same time, Blake Yarbrough sneaks in the snake. Yeah, Dynasty looking good to put their fourth point on the board right now. See if Level can do some damage control to those backhands. Not the best spots. Yeah, Level looked good this, in the beginning of this point, but Ryan Greenspan just broke open this game for Dynasty. Now level stuck in those two cans, kind of like we talked about. You don't want to be there the if you're trying to point, pull points off. Rich, two-pack for Ryan? Yeah. You know, seeing if Ryan might be yeah. in the running for the 1000 bucks. Shot but. one, ran one. Don't try to get yourself a dinner out of this. I see what no, you're doing. No, I, no, I, well, he, I just know uh, that he's going to come up and sell that move as the one that should, <laughs> hey, I don't no know matter what happens. This to you, man, like, but. No, no, but that five-pack was really soft, though. You know, my two-pack was much better. If you really look at it analytically, in the moment. Listen, man, you can do the right thing here or you can do the wrong thing here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I think we both know what the right thing to do is. Blake Yarbrough going forward, looks back at the ref, maybe, maybe he's like a, a grazer. Oh, Blake Yarbrough's gonna get this elimination. Blake gets one. Yeah, Blake trying to finish this one off and we'll be able to do it. Look for a concession from level now. It's a two point lead, so the score is the same here. In these matches, the difference is the time. Dynasty still has to hold on to this two-point lead for the next seven minutes, whereas X-Factor kind of getting down to it here to try to get back in this match against Impact with a two-point lead, but the score is the same. In the yeah. pits here with Level. Yeah, we have a replay of how Rainey stands and got shot in that last point, and it looked like he took an unfortunately unlucky bounce shot. Yeah, so if we pan back here, so Rainey is tucked into that position, and they're bouncing it off that pin. He's yeah, he's tucked in, and he just caught an unlucky bounce shot right there on the shoulder, and then goes to crawl up. Referee comes, saw it, saw the hit, and then pulled him out, and that was the penalty. So yeah, he got shot in the shoulder, and then tried to crawl up. Penalty assessed. Rubs his shoulder against that bunker. A little lucky bit. didn't lucky, get a major. Lucky, lucky it wasn't red. Yeah. All of Ben and Carroll. <laughs> yeah, we saw that replay of Stephen <laughs> Carroll. Then he's like, no, 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 no. I, I thought it bounced, and I just run a really tight line. I'm like, I'm sure that's what you should be saying. Totally. Right of course. <laughs> of course you did. But what it looked like from up here, <laughs> Impact taking the field on the blue side. Got a decent little lead here against X Factor. It's not full send mode for X Factor, but it's getting close. They cannot just get to their primaries and hope to dink impact out. They've got to get into the snake. They've got to go up the center. They've got to go down the Doritos and put pressure on the impact players. Yeah, and also, again, take advantage of some of these uh, deals here from our sponsors. The sponsor of the Golden Barrel Carbon Paintball that you can get any, if you buy any Carbon Zero SDL goggle system, you get a free clear lens. 
at Carbon Paintball. That's crbnpaintball.com. All right, so. Snake on the break from Billy Bosch. Billy Bernaccia ran and shot the whole way. That was amazing. Impact Nick Laval moving into the wing on the drill side. Colt Roberts into the big brick on the D side. So X Factor definitely trying to win this game. LJ Parrish going forward, getting shot on Impact's side of the field as he goes into Impact's Dorito 4. Four on five advantage here for Impact. X Factor does have better field position. Impact player getting a check, not getting a penalty is Brandon Cornell. Yeah, minute 45 left here. Tense moments as X Factor and putting themselves in position here, Rich. I mean, they can definitely pull within one if they can execute a couple kills. They, they lose Parrish, obviously, but they still have a, a double stack of bodies on that D side. And Rainey over here on the snake side is the and, and a body in front of him, too. Looking, they just got to find a way to get through these gaps. They need yeah. to do it pretty quick. Colt Roberts trying to figure it out right now, Matty. Colt's going to roll the dice. He comes up. He gets He one. gets that one. He gets oh, a shot traded. on the ball. Traded. Traded out. Oh, and Billy Bernacci gets taken out as Rainey stands it. Does a little tactical retreat to the back center. Two on two, I think, Matt. Yeah, man, I think Impact did enough, Might though. It's going to be up to either a heroic yeah, move from TJ Danner or Rainey because they need two to tie. There's only a minute and four seconds left. As here comes Mouse. Mouse is going to go up and trade out with TJ. It leaves it into a one on one with just a minute to go. Good trade there for Mouse. For sure. Because, look, ultimately, you just need to win on Sunday. Yep. The point spread doesn't mean anything. So for Rainey, Rainey really has to force the issue here in this one on one. Yeah. He can't hide, he can't uh, play smart, he can't you know, set a trap. He's basically just got to force the issue, force a gunfight. He should probably reload right now, that's what he should do. So Rainey forces the gunfight and does get the kill. So we got himself a coin for you, courtesy of Coin Duel and Hornethis. And we have 30 seconds, so Rainey Stanzik, nice job getting creative out there. And, and just at the end of the... At the end of that, though, he just had to try to run Axel down and hope that it worked out for him. That's yeah. exactly what happened. Yeah. So. Sometimes you don't have time to play good. You just got to go. <laughs> yeah. He was all over the place in the snake. He goes back to the center, comes back, and then he realized, okay, hey, man, I got to make this happen. He's wiry. In the pits here with Coach Ryan Brandon, his boys, San Antonio X Factor. Okay. And Impact holding on to that one point lead. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Two-point game, mismatch as well. Dynasty in a really good position here. As long as they survive the breakout, burn some clock up. Level has no problem attacking, though. They just need to be able to execute on their attack. They lose two body, too many bodies early in their attacks. <clears throat> on the breakout, we're looking here at San Diego Dynasty from the red side, or uh, blue side. This is level. Level drops one on the tower, G side. Yeah, they sent in Cranmer. Four and he five has a advantage. getting taken out. Dynasty in their primary positions. Ryan Greenspan in the center tower. Yosh around back center. Marcelo in the can on the snake side. I'm yeah. sorry, on the drill side. And that good break for Dynasty. Yeah. Five bodies alive, two point lead to protect. They just need to burn clock right now. And they're in the spots to do it. They can sit here and burn a lot of clock. No one outside on the snake side for level. That was definitely shooting their guns, but they're shooting their guns from the back line, and they're they're down on points. So they got to start kind of going forward, putting more pressure on Dynasty, pushing Dynasty off of those gaps. Yosh Rao releasing now from the back center to the tower. He'll be in a good position to shut down the snake side, making it challenging for Level to move to the big brick on the snake side, or even fill the brick or snake. Yeah, look for Dynasty to take zero risks here as they already, in, they're in decent spots. I mean, they could move up a couple more positions to get slightly better angles as they're gonna do that on the D side, but gotta be careful. Oh, gonna be taking the walk there though. So Dynasty, mistake, losing a body on that D side. And even up the count, should be four on four now. It's like Alex taking the walk for Dynasty over there on the D side, four on four. Similar field positions, but Dynasty up by two. Great fill out snakes out again by Archie. Gets into that snake insert bunker. He's got two guys in front of him, but he'd like to put one of those guys in and get in that snake. That would force a level up to try to match him, and Yosh Rao's in a position to catch the level up player coming across. Good communication from both squads. Level, again, with the two to tie, but with five minutes. It's not a moment where they need to just run into these guns yet. They have, say, about another minute and a half before they have to start getting a little bit more proactive on the offense. 
Danny takes that snake into her bunker now. Matched up with Archie. Where you go? Oh no. Good communication from both teams. Again, Dynasty just trying to sure up their defenses. Level trying to get offensive, trying to figure out where they can get through the gaps. They need to get into the snake. They need to fill up into the 50s and the center of the field, and they need to move down those Doritos so they can put more pressure on Ryan Greenspan in the uh, tower, Archie in the snake insert, Marcelo in the Dorito can, and Yosh Rao in the wing on the Dorito side. Well, right now, you have Dynasty locking down this angle uh, to try to keep Danny out of the snake. Danny on his, looking for his, some more paint on his back. He might be down to his last pod, not quite sure. And then here comes uh, Ryan Greenspan. He's going to improve his position. He's going to get to that 50 up in the center, well, which Level's probably not going to expect that. He did hit the bunker, though, because yeah. it is so slippery out here. So they might know that he's there. Level's popping the top, goes across to the next wedge. They're trying to find a way to get through this cross, but now with, oh, and Ryan Greenspan not able to get the shot in on Level, moving across to get to that, but they do shoot Danny Schonauer out. Level getting crazy, trying to pop the top of that brick in the center to try to shoot out Greenspan. Here comes Yosh Rao. He's going to commit and drop the hammer as Lemon comes through and sh uh, spinal taps Greenspan. Red penalty Yosh, Lemon. Yosh runs through, shoots shoots Corwin, and the penalty was on Lemon, 21. I believe so. And then that's going to pull out the last body because Danny was already dead. Askren was still alive for Level on that D side. He got pulled for the penalty. If it Was it a major? Yeah. Okay, then there might be one more that needed to be pulled and they weren't didn't have an extra body, so it looks like level might be starting down. That's a big boost here to, to San Diego Dynasty. Looks like it's starting to get a little slippery out there, Matty. Yeah. It's just tough because you don't want to be hitting the bunkers you're moving to because it telegraphs your position, and it's just so tough to start your slide early enough to avoid smashing into yeah. those bunkers. You just got to constantly recalibrate based on the viscosity of the ground around that bunker. Axel coming snake side for impact. I and mean, this is big. X Factor has a chance. Impact up by one. Needs to hold on for 29 seconds left. And here comes a full send. They shoot Axel off the break and they don't lose anybody. Five bodies alive and four. We're at the 50 here within five seconds for San Antonio X Factor. Billy's going to launch and he gets through. There goes another body coming off. It's Jackson for impact. And Billy look for a potential penalty here. No penalty. Parrish gets shot. Billy gets shot. Colt Roberts gets shot. Still two bodies left alive with, I think, just Rainey Stanzik left alive right now, and that is going to do it. Oh, it might have been a penalty. penalty there's yeah. four minutes left alive. There's no way a concession was going to happen. Yeah, but who was the penalty on is the question. Because if it was on impact, then it's going to be a tie <laughs> game. And if it was on X Factor, this game's over. It was impact on moves on. It was on X Factor. Yeah, typically it normally is on the attackers. But I just I didn't see the penalty, so. I didn't either, but Mouse looks real happy. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm assuming he knows what's going on. Yeah, and you assume the team that's flying down the field is probably more likely to get a penalty, right? That was, yeah, that's normally the people that get penalties, but not always. And if you guys are joining us on your, uh, uh, please head on over to uh, to Go Sports, trying to do all we can here to take this sport to another level, but we do need your support to do that. I also need your support, Matt. I'm kind of cold. If you could hold me, that would be great. I'm not cold, but I am starting to get a little wet because the said, uh, rain I, is hitting I said, I sideways. I wasn't asking for your call. I Why is it always you about you, Rich? Me. I, I I'm mean, old. I know you're substantially older than I am, but I'm also kind of getting up there, too. So, I mean, where's my help? Grandpa Marshall. So they do give impact the point, and that is going to knock out San Antonio X Factor. It was a noble attempt there at the end. They yeah, almost I, got when through. I saw that breakout, I was like, oh, hey, we got a tie game here. They've got four dudes on the 50s, and they're all alive. Yeah, in about five seconds. Yeah, but. They got, and they got two more quick kills, but the three, the two, three, four, which is the two cans in the back center, held down tight, got a couple kills, and it ended up being a three on one, and then that penalty just did not help. Well, we got more time left in this one here. It looks like Level's playing with format. They confirmed the uh, major. I'll show it to you. Yeah, so they came in, looked at the replay, confirmed the major. Uh, again, I'm not sure who it was on, so I'd kind of like to get that info, but... 21 on level. Oh, the, okay, so this was the... So that major was on, I believe, Lemon. We're seeing the replays on it right now. So here goes Lemon's going to launch. And then, yeah, I see right there. Bam, hitting the leg, continuing to come through. And yeah, replays have been on it this weekend. 
Good job in the booth, guys. Thank you. Like, actually being able to see the ball hitting the guy is such a, a big difference, right? That's amazing. Past events, it's always just been speculation. I think that guy probably got shot in that area. Now we can actually see the, the paint breaking off, and that's amazing. 2-1-2. Two, two. Blake Yarbrough playing the back center for Dynasty. Yoshirao's been playing it, but a little rotation out there. Ryan goes to his tower. Blake releases to the wing. Oh, levels in the snake on the break, Matt. Blake Yarbrough being eliminated. Marcelo taking the walk as well, Matt. Yeah, Blake and Marcelo both taking the walk. Politi in the snake yeah, for Columbus Politi's level, and he's just going to gun himself right into the 50-yard line wrap around. Pleading, feeling no pressure right now as the downpour has really increased. He's, the only person on him is the can on the snake side. D1 wants to start shooting that way, but might not be able to see through the rain. <laughs> yeah, it's instead of looking into the sun, he's looking into the rain. Yeah, it is uh, it's getting wet and sloppy out here for sure. Who's 13 for level? Um, Sorry, I know you know their guys a little bit better. Uh, than you. I, yeah, I need to look at Are but you sure it's 13? He, no. You mean 33? Yes. 33 is Weber. Weber again coming up strong. Well, Weber comes level. through. He gets one. He gets two, and he gets a three pack yeah, potentially <laughs> to finish. And then he gets shot by his own team. But that's on the in the running for three pack move of yeah. the day here. A thousand bucks. Three pack against stake. the best team in the world to keep himself to in the keep match. Himself in the match. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But so 2:14 left to go. Going to be down by two. Five to three will be the score. Nick Sloviak down there playing in the puddles. <laughs> He's got a little umbrella. He's got his little, his little slippies on, and he's jumping in the puddles. Another beautiful day here at the paintball field, Gaelic Park, Chicago. Hope everybody's enjoying the uh, the show. Yeah, look how dry everyone looks in the pits right now. <laughs> hey, Danny Corwin, Josh, Matt, and Sam. Tyler Dobiak taking over coaching duties here for Level. As Robbie Goldsmith has started a whiskey company. I was going to say, developed a drinking problem. <laughs> but no, yeah, de definitely starting a whiskey company. And I think they're going to, I think the whiskey company is going to be debuted in World Cup. Yes, I think it's Silver Belly Whiskey. Still waiting for my delivery, Rob. Hook me up. Uh, no, yeah, we love Robbie Goldsmith, and uh, he's always working on something creative. So Robbie Goldsmith is going to probably uh, live to be 100 and die a very rich man. I can't wait to see it. So let's get a look here at this, at the uh, this replay with level. Look at Corwin Weber. So Corwin Weber, Weber in a huge moment, with barely any time left, considering that they're still down by two, comes through, shoots one, shoots two, a little three pack. Let's get another angle on it. Comes through, stuffs up the first guy, and then just on the run in this downpour. And then I think he got shot by his own team. I mean, I, maybe Blake put a ball on him right there. I couldn't see. But regardless, back in the pits here with Lovell. Going to have two minutes in between points. You know who's a hate life right now? Who? X Factor. Yeah. they got to wait in the rain, in the mud, and in their misery to go shake hands after losing. Excuse me. It's coming sideways now. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely getting a oh, little. Matt, your laptop, your laptop. Getting a little wet up here. Oh. Another beautiful, beautiful day at the paintball field. A little bit, a little bit of wind coming in Let's with the rain. Go, boys. Hey, the harder level guys going the back out go. there. Carmel Cassie walking down the sidelines. New member of Columbus Level. Absolutely. Previous uh, teammate of Matt Miller, one of the best guys in paintball. Sorry if we're uh, a little bit uh, quiet here on the mics. We're uh, kind of bagging up our stuff and trying to keep stuff uh, dry up here. Batting down the hatches, Mitch. Yeah, that now hatches as the wind <laughs> blows this rain in here. Let's see if Level can step up. So, oh, great run on the break for Level. They make it into the snake mat. They do the L route in and over, and they get there clear. Five alive for both teams. Level with one player up the center, one in the snake. Dynasty with their standard breakout. Three across the back, center tower, and Drito one. Yeah, crucial moments right now here with under. Two minutes to go, but only down by two. Level does have a chance. 
But good field position here for Dynasty. Five eyes in, you know, in, in the pocket mostly, but they do have a little bit of penetration up the center with Greenspan, and he can launch from that tower. They are also out at D1. They are not doubling up that can, which can cost them, but they do allow Weber to get into the snake. And then here comes the attack in the center. Uh, referee is going to be chasing. Ooh, and a penalty assessed here on Yosh Rao. That's going to pull out Marcelo. And then, but Archie gets out wide, and Ryan gets back during that chaos. Oh, here comes Archie, Matt. Archie sneaks up. No one sees Archie Montemayor. As and usual. he is going to get the drop in on Lemon. Is Corwin still in there? I couldn't see. Archie comes through, blazing wow, down the clutch. field. And definitely going to potentially put the coffin uh. nail in this game. Except for, did the point get stolen on the other side? Archie Montemayor thinks he got that, but I'm pretty sure that Level got that Askren or the point is good. Okay, so we're getting thumbs up. On both sides. We're going to have to go to the replay here. So both both guys think they got it. I think Level beat Archie there. It looked there. like it from us. Level I got think it. it was Sam Silberg. Everyone just looks a little bit. Not have a look. Ever, I think it was Sam. Sam was giving yeah. Archie the get out the field I got well, first. Well, Sam, it looked, I had my head on a swivel, and I think that Sam hit the buzzer slightly before Archie did. From our perspective. From our perspective. Like. Uh, and that was Sam Soberg. Both just an amazing job by both Sam Silberg and uh, and Archie Montemayor. Sam Soberg on the D side for Columbus level, shoots everybody. And then uh, and then Archie did it on the snake side too. So kind of tough to even tell who had the better move in that one. Because both of them shot some bodies. Archie, uh, sorry, uh, Dynasty did give Level a bit of a gift with that penalty. For sure. And But that you, know, you saw just the, the heads-up play by Archie in that chaos to sneak out. Then no one at Level was looking that way. And you, oh, you could see, look how frustrated Archie is here in the pit. Let's listen in real quick. Yeah, Archie just very frustrated that he didn't get that point because he thought he stole that yeah. one. Yeah, well, you know, emotionally you're super high, right? You come back, you're like, wait, no, what? No, so Sam was able to put that point on the board here for level. We got a game, man, one-point match here in this downpour in Chicago on Sunday. We're in the quarterfinals. And this is a crucial event. Whoever wins this event, this is a major, so they will get a buy into the top eight at World Cup playing in the playing for that 40,000 bucks that's at stake for the Champions Cup. Dynasty already going to be in the top eight. They had two major wins. They've won four majors in a row. Trying to put a, a historic fifth on the board. Timeout called. All right, let's see the race to the buzzers. Let's see the race to the buzzer here while we got a little bit of time. So you can see here Sam Silberg at the top for level, and he gets there just about two steps before Archie. Maybe an A step. Yeah, it was a step and a reach for Archie. Sam was already there. Yeah, so look at that. So Sam's there, and his hand is up, and he's hit just hit the buzzer. And as we pan back, Archie, yeah, a step and a reach. That's how close it was. Great job by Sam Silberg, and also great job by Archie Montemayor. What's the score, Matt? The score is 5-4. to four. <laughs> in favor of San Diego Dynasty. How much time? Oh, got to be under a minute. Around a minute. Can level entertain us? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was, I was getting hit by a blast of water during that last one. <laughs> so. I expect you to be on top of this, Matt, <laughs> as I huddle over here in the only dry spot in the tent. <laughs> we can start lighting on the Yeah, I, I picked the morning. wrong side of the, of the uh, commentator booth to stand on today. Hey, you, got, you didn't get blasted with the sun for the first two days, though. <laughs> Here we go. Dynasty just having to get to their spots and survive. Level having to figure out how to 60 win a seconds point to go. against the best team in the world in less than 60 seconds. Did Level lose a body? Yeah, that's the body of the break. Okay, so He's down to four here, see if they can get things done. Going against five bodies in Dynasty. Dynasty in that same exact position we've seen them these past few points. They got D1, oh, they lose Greenspan. So now it's an even count, four on four. Oh, they're gonna lose Blake. Just three bodies left alive for Dynasty. And Dynasty looking at four, so one body, one body advantage right now for level. They got 30 seconds to work with, Rich. They Definitely cannot... possible. Oh, Dynasty just last dropped. Oh, my God. Dynasty Dorito player just. Penalty might be getting a here on Askren. It's a minor penalty. It's going to be a two on three right now. But here comes Lemon trying to make up for the penalty he got. He's going to blast Snake uh, D1. Player's definitely hit. It's the second time he's been shot. And then here comes Silberg. Silberg's going to try to steal it again. 
And then they're going to trade out. Maybe a penalty on this one. It might be a oh, no point no here point. as we get to five seconds. It comes down to the very end. No, hold on. Wait, a penalty wait. was assessed. A penalty was assessed. Yeah. Whoever was in that Drito, they got away with a hand hit before they got shot the second time. Well, Level is celebrating like they got the point here. I think they did because I, th yeah. I think Marcelo or somebody over on the Drito side got a penalty. Oh, oh nope. Well, wait a sec. Panda looks confused. They were, they were screaming, let's go, Ohio. Panda's like, wait a second. There was a penalty assessed. What's going on? Shonar over here is asking. Oh, Shonar is asking if Dynasty is starting with three, Matt. This could be huge. So... No, nope, so Pano's calling for Jason. <laughs> Jason! I, so there was a penalty that was assessed. I didn't see. Yeah, Pano's stoked. So I, he's celebrating enough to make me believe in whatever he thinks of <laughs> how it went down. Regardless, I just like to see him that happy. Yeah, but... Because, man, but it's hey, just, in a position. Just real quick, let's set the stage here. On the board right now, it's still 5-4. to four. We're in the Dynasty pit. They do look... They look like they did get a penalty to affect this game, and Level's been celebrating like they know exactly what happened. However... Yeah, Pando's over. D Danny and Panda were over asking, are they starting with three? I heard. Thus, was that a major? Again, I didn't see the flag, but I saw the ref signaling for the body that wasn't out there to pull. And then, but the way that it all shook out with the heard the game time finish, that had just tough to call, uh, tough to tell right now from what we've seen here in this downpour. Yeah, it's getting crazy out here. Mitch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we could. It's the, the weather was so good for two days. Oh man, it just got blessed. And then the paintball gods are like, okay, you're gonna have an all-star game today for the first time in years? Guess what? Downpour all day. Look That's that. what's up. Look at that poor NXL camera guy out there with his sh short sleeve shirt. Over oh, time, over oh, time. Getting hearing in my ear from our booth that there may be, and uh, there may be headed to overtime. I've heard you know? it's definitely overtime. I heard it's actually they're gonna skip overtime and go right to the one-on-ones. Well, that, for, yeah, for drama's sake. I do want to see the overtime. Rod's going back, talking to the refs. Try to overhear. Everyone's trying to figure it out right now. <laughs> I mean, somebody's got to know what's up. Also, uh, if you've got a four-wheel drive and I could borrow your car for lunch, that'd be great because I don't think I'm getting out of the parking lot. <laughs> Man, been a lot of penalties this weekend, huh? A lot of penalties. Almost an excessive amount of penalties. Mm, I see what you did there. I see what you did. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just really cold. Well, Jason, I'm not really cold, but I'm starting to get pretty wet. Uh, Jason is talking to to the referee that's in the tower. The head ref. Yeah, to try to figure out exactly what went what went on. Pando, Dave Pando, the owner of uh, of Level, is sitting here trying to also figure out No, he's what's telling going Jason. On. Oh, no, no, Jason, that's exactly what happened. It's They are starting with three. We've actually already won. Pando looks pretty confident. Oh, Carl Markowski. But what I was warned level is even if Dynasty starts with three players, do not take them lightly. Yeah. Because they will try to win that point and have a, at least a 40% chance of winning that point. Well, Carl Markowski and Hollowell have come over here to try to figure out what's happening. We're seeing a celebration in the pits right now. As was Oh, the celebration is from uh, the people in the VIP who are Columbus level fans because the point, uh, point finally went on the board for level. Level got some fans over there. That's what we like to see. Good job, Level. <laughs> so Pando is uh, stoked as he should be. Hey, it's not over yet. Go go get your boys pumped up. Yeah. <laughs> so Five go, three, but don't take Hey, it's not over yet. Go get your boys pumped up. Ah, oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> we all do. We all do. I'm looking at the monitor. They look dialed right now. <laughs> we got Pando yelling. It's, it rains all the time in a while. We'll be fine. <laughs> I'm from I'm from San Diego, Pando. You know, I, I don't even know what this is. This is freaking me out right now. Is this the apocalypse? Now the, it looks like officially. So the big question that Pando was uh, yelling at us is, and he was waiting to hear the confirmation is whether or not um, they were going to be starting with three. Yeah. And because if Dynasty is starting with three because of an apparent major, I would like to get a little bit. Uh, yes, you got some for me. Who are the three if Dynasty has to play with three? Because that's a tough call. Because obviously it's Ryan and Archie. Yeah. Who's the third? Marcelo. I'm not saying it's obviously Ryan and Archie, but it's obviously Ryan it, and Archie. It's yeah. Marcelo. That would be the three. Major. We're hearing major penalty on Dynasty. 
four seconds on the clock. Dynasty starting with three. Oh, Dynasty starting Ooh. three with four seconds on the clock. So it's oh, not, okay. it's, they, yeah, Dynasty as usual sneaks right out of so there. That's, yeah, so that's a really big boost to Dynasty. Yeah, that's, that's good for them. So Pano got really excited, but probably for nothing in yes. the sense that, okay, good that the point went to them, but the issue is is that there's still four seconds left. Dynasty's gonna be able to burn that off and Dynasty, get back to five on the, five this, for overtime. Uh, last three seconds? Yeah, we'll go ahead and play yeah, it. I think we will we'll play, play it. it. Yeah. Four seconds though, right? Yeah. But, so yeah, now, I mean, now as long as Dynasty doesn't get a, a, a penalty on this four second point, then they'll start with five again in overtime against level. Yeah. With a full five minutes on the board. It's, uh, it's gotten to the point where all the big puddles on the ground have connected and just become one big puddle. <laughs> and it's still early, man. we got a long day. Looking, we'll see. Uh, it's going to be, I, I don't know. I haven't the checked the weather of me since coming morning. back when I go to get lunch are slim. Very <laughs> slim. There's Nick Carney. with his battle paint on. It's getting smeared here. His mascara is running for it sure. Do, it does look like uh, that this is a man that is used to rain. <laughs> <laughs> nah, rain doesn't bother like, me. I'm, I'm fine. just going to stand out here. You want to get on the set? No, I'm good. I'm fine. So after all the chaos, the clock is now running. One minute to go. There's Weber. There's been a standout, big standout here for level, and, and same with Askren. I would love to see that penalty if we can see it. Yeah, if we could get a look here at that penalty, that would definitely help us try to figure out also what happened. So, so there goes Archie, and it looks like it's on Marcelo. Oh, yeah, Marcelo right there. Yeah, so Marcelo gets blasted right there. You see the, the ball break off of him, and then he still gets that gun up. It looked like it was on his pack, so because yeah, Marcelo shot. typically doesn't get penalties in moments like this, in situations like this. The, and the problem, the reason it was a red, because after he got shot in the pack, he did eliminate the last level yeah. player. So you see the the paint break off him there, and then he shoots. Uh, was it Lemon? I think directly in the chest. Yeah. So that a major is you get shot, and then you shoot someone. That's that's uh, the definition of a major. So the very definition. Jumping into this four second point, but this is actually a blessing for Dynasty. Blessing in disguise. So yep. since they did get the major, but it's the major itself is not potentially gonna cost them. Uh, it happens, it's what's gonna happen in this overtime point. Yeah, they're gonna be frustrated they shouldn't have had to gone to that, but you know, still it, what happened happened. Yeah, because also one of their guys got away with it in the Dorito over there as well. So that one of those penalties was well deserved. So now we will uh, be heading into an overtime point. We're in the pits again with level. Robbie Goldsmith, wherever he is, probably if he's not in some sort of a meeting. High level meeting. New company. CEO we're at, stuff. We're at an event because he throws a lot of events too. He's definitely watching, biting his nails right now. <laughs> Come, on, Come on, guys. Because if level can knock out Dynasty, if you can beat Dynasty, you can beat anybody. You can beat anybody. Man, the confidence that they would have going forward would have to be huge. Swagger level 1,000. Carney pumping his boys up. I'll tell you what, the, at least so far, the ground is holding this rain well. It has not devolved into a mud bog yet. Yeah, there's no, and there's no puddles on the field either. Well, which there's is no puddles on the field, but if you do, <laughs> when we are looking in the pits, the, the whole entire pit area is one giant puddle. Good water skiing later. Get this jet skis out. All right, so waiting to see. Team's gonna send out for this overtime point. Who's it gonna be? San Diego Dynasty, or will it be an upset victory here for Columbus level? They've gone deep. They've taken a third place at the first event. Made Sunday at the last one. Two hiccups in between, but have a big opportunity right now. Seconds. 20 seconds to go for the start of this overtime point. Dynasty on the blue side in the blue and black and level on that red side. Huge moment right now. Yeah, and a, and a difference, right? Like calm, cool, and collective probably on the Dynasty. Like, hey, we've been here a thousand times. We know exactly what to do. We're expected to win this. And level like, hey, guys, this is our opportunity. Oh, they lose their first attacker, snake side, Maddie. Four on five advantage for Dynasty. I think that kill was either, how oh, less three guns actually it was that Yosh. way. Yosh, Yosh is in the back center, yeah. yeah. And he sits real deep on the cut, which gives him that yeah, whole I, gap. I just saw Marcelo's gun that way as well. Oh, oh but Yosh gets shot out. And 
So now it's a four on four situation. Four on three, here. level losing another, oh, level player, losing another body. And yep. Ryan Greenspan is hunting up in the center. He's past the 50 yard line trying to shut down that D side. He's in a really good spot and has uh, bodies behind him to work with. No one out on the snake side at all. Archie looking to make that move though. Does have to worry there is a gun at that can waiting for him to make the move. No, I think oh. they think he's already in the snake. The yeah. can does at least. It oh, looks that, like he's that, looking at the That 50. can wasn't actually putting any paint on that angle, so Archie just walked right in there. Yeah. He, I think you're right. I think Weber thinks that the snake is yeah. hot. And Four then, on two now, man. Yeah, no, it's not looking good here for level. Just two bodies left alive. Weber at the can, Greenspan and Monomayor in really good positions. Greenspan's in that center, Monomayor in the snake. And great job by Marcel to communicate and let them know where those last two players are. And that is going to do it. And Archie Montemayor, Ryan Greenspan, Alex Frazee, and Marcelo Margot going to prevail here in overtime <laughs> to send San Diego Dynasty into Forward. a semifinal performance here. So we will see. Dynasty still has a chance to win five majors in a row. And they had to do it in a pretty nasty scrap here against an up-and-coming level. So level looking real frustrated right now, 1,000-yard stairs as their chances are gone. That's almost we'll two tournaments in, in a row ranks. that Dynasty cost them uh, going forward by penalties. Yeah, so, but they, you know, man, if you can get through a solid fight like this. Man, makes you Dyn stronger. Yeah, it definitely makes you stronger. So that is going to do it here for this quarterfinal set. Stick with us, though. It's definitely getting crazy out in Chicago, the Windy City for the Windy City Major. I'm Manny Marshall with Rich Stelford here on GoSports.com. We'll be back with a second quarterfinal set. Set. We'll see you in just a few. Historically, the Chicago event brings out the beast in the best, as it has always been one of the hardest events to win. Since you are deep into the season, and there are no more excuses. Every team has had time to sharpen their skills, refine their lineups and their weapons. All eyes are on the top teams as favorites at the battle that's about to go down in the Windy City. San Diego Dynasty sits in the number one spot with four major victories in a row. Houston Heat is in second overall, though it has been over a year since they hoisted a first place trophy. Impact and damage are tied for third, but they have both put up wins in 2022. Though the smart money is on these top teams, Pro Paintball has never been this competitive. It upsets lurk and surprises await for any of the old guard who sleep on this new crop of talented and hungry pro players who have arrived to earn respect. It is unsure if this new blood is ready to win an event of this magnitude. Tune in September 9th through the 11th and find out as the best paintball players and teams in the world gunfight at the NXL Windy City Major only on GoSports.com. Just two events left in the 2022 NXL season. Let's take a look at the state of pro paintball and the hierarchy of merit that has materialized through the battles at the four events so far. At the end of the season, a prize awaits. The very first NXL Champions Cup and the $40,000 that comes with it. Four dominant teams sit at the top of our sport. Names that many fans have become familiar with over the past years as they have proven yet again